freetalklive.com. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MindThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MindThings.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, inviting you here to take control of the airwaves. You can bring up anything that you want, though. Fascinating story and sad story about some uh, couple teenagers shot to death as they entered a man's home. Uh, they came down into his basement. He was waiting there for them with a shotgun, blasted them both to death. Uh, he had been robbed previously, presumably by the same two young folks. I believe the story does say that, yeah. It confirms that it was those two? Yeah. Because he does have some sort of security cam footage uh, of this happening. Just uh, slaughters these two young people. And, of course, the argument from one side is that, well, he's defending his home. This is his castle. He has these two interlopers coming in. Who knows what their intentions are? Maybe their intention were, was to rob him the first time. Maybe now they want to kill him. Who knows what was going through his head? Court documents that were not allowed as evidence showed Brady had broken into Smith's house and garage before, but it doesn't say anything about stealing the firearms. So uh, the other side, of course, is that this man premeditated murder, that he knew that he would have two vic- you know, potential victims coming into his home, or more than one uh, potential victim coming into his home, and that if he played his cards right, that he'd be able to get away with killing some teenagers. And apparently the jury believed the, the latter version of the story. We'll continue. Your thoughts are welcome at 855-450 free. Ian, what do you think of when I say Sherry's berries? Delicious, juicy, uh, humongous, most importantly. <laughs> yeah. Sherry's berries are delicious premium strawberries. These are not the strawberries you get in the grocery store. For one, they're largely it's perfectly shaped. They're mm. also ripe at that perfect state of ripeness. Yeah, they must be very, very choosy about the berries they're they're In, allowing. Indeed, they are, they must be. I I don't. That's that's the one thing that I keep on thinking, sort of uh, consistently with Sherry's berries. Man, yeah. these are perfect strawberries. It's top shelf every time. So they dip them in chocolate, white chocolate, milk chocolate, dark chocolate. They're delicious. Um, I know you may say I don't like dark chocolate or oh, I hate white chocolate. Look, these things are delicious, and you don't you don't, you just have never experienced anything like Sherry's berries. There's no candy. That you like that's as good as these. Believe me. Yeah. Sherry's. I think it's a killer gift any the, time of the year. You can go to berries.com. Yep, that's B E R R I E S dot com to get Sherry's berries. They're going to be a great gift for Mother's Day. Mom will love them. You can get a dozen of them. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm getting this right. Uh, is it a, is it a dozen of them starting at 19.99? I don't Ian? believe that's the case. Okay, what do you think? It's six of them for 19. Six. Okay, because I don't see the the number here. Um, yeah. So anyway, you can double your order for ten dollars more. So maybe it's six of them for uh, twenty bucks, and then uh, double your order up to to a dozen for ten dollars more. That sounds right to me. Okay. Click on the mic in the upper right hand corner and use uh, coupon code F. TL for these enormous, fresh, juicy, mouth-watering berries, and everything that we could possibly say about these berries um, in the, in the positive is true. Sherry's Berries dot. Um, you go to berries dot com. I'm, I'm messing this up completely, Ian. Um, go to berries dot com. Use coupon code FTL. Click on the uh, the microphone in the upper right hand corner. I'm just that excited about them. And uh, the deal expires on Friday at midnight, so make sure you order now. You want to get these? We already ate all of ours. Yeah, we ate them very quickly, <laughs> very very quickly. <laughs> um, you want to get them ahead ahead of time because um, shipping around Mother's Day tends to sort of uh, bump up. Well, you can also select when you want them delivered as well. Yep. when you order there. So, so there you go. Yeah. Berries dot com coupon code FTL. Let's go to Matt. He's in Minnesota, and I believe that's where the shooting took place. Is that right? That's right. Uh, so Matt in northern Minnesota, listening to WNMT, the shooting of uh, two teenagers entering into a man's home, coming into his basement. He shot him to death. He's been convicted of murder. 
Is this murder? Matt, what do you think? Well, I think that, you know, one of the biggest things about the case was the the amount of time that he took before he called the authorities. Um, you know, if I remember right, it was... It was a day. Like, Yeah, it was, it was like the day. next day. And, you know, being a... I, I've got a concealed carry permit, and I wouldn't wouldn't be deterred from using it to protect my home whatsoever. But, you know, you immediately have to be on the phone with the authorities, letting them know what is going on, that there's someone breaking into your home, you know, and trying to be as, as forthright as possible. I mean, it just looks like he was trying to cover it up or, or whatever by, by leaving that much time. Can, so, I mean, it, it's no matter what, what are the, the things kids that, that, did or go ahead. It, it just, it just looks so bad when you don't report it for that long. Agreed. One of the things that bothers me the most about this is the second shooting of the girl. So um, you right. might be able to pass off the shooting of the young man coming down the stairs. You know, this kid's um, burgled the house before, and, you know, he he gets him. But yeah. I'm, I'm just – here's what I, I'm trying to envision the situation. The young girl's either out in the vehicle. She's up – you know, she's upstairs in, you know, the, the upper part of the house. He's down in the ba- – um, the, the uh, homeowner's down in the basement. She hears this thunderous 12-gauge shotgun go off. Um, boom! And, you know, she starts wailing. She's upset. She's trying to figure out what just occurred. She She's imagining the worst, and the worst did occur. Um, and uh, so she, at some point or another, you know, steals herself to, to go downstairs into the basement, and then he shoots her. Maybe she's hollering while she goes, Nick, 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 you know, and uh, then and- he shoots her twice, um, not just the first time, but then catches her and blows her head off. Yeah, and that's you, you have to understand that that you have the right to to defend your home, but yeah. you have to do that in the least you know evasive way possible, and you can't just the number of shots that you shoot, even the amount, even the type of of ammunition that you have in your gun can be brought into a court case like this. And if you have, you know, if you're using a pistol with hollow points and that type of thing, can be brought in as as trying to ensure that that person dies and not just protecting your home. So, I mean, I don't know. I think the guy was completely in the wrong because he didn't have to do what he did. And he should have been on the phone with the authorities as soon as possible, just in case one of them could have lived. I mean, he didn't even give that that opportunity to those to those kids. That who knows when when they actually died or how long they lived after they were shot. In uh, Germanic law or Viking or Viking law, if there was a dispute that ended in death, you had within three houses to alert other people as to what you had done. So if you you know went over to your neighbor's house and there was some kind of dispute or whatever and you ended up you know, he came after you with a weapon, you killed him, you had three houses to be able to stop within to sort of alert people. This is what occurred. And mm-hmm. if you didn't alert them within those three houses, then it was considered a bad kill. Yeah, and well I don't know. I I think that that the guy just really stepped over the line and by by not reporting it, it makes it look like he was doing just that and trying to, to just punish these two kids that had burgled his house and upset him. But Thanks, Matt. I appreciate your call and uh, thoughts, input on that. Johnny, right? I know you've got something you want to get out there. We're going to get to that here in a moment. 855-453. That's 855-450-3733 here on Free Talk Live. Gentlemen, in search of a million-dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud, the fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste, and safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. 
MyMagicMud.com. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. When the cleaners ruined some special clothing, all they could do was show us a sign that said they weren't responsible. But when they got the letter from one of our Legal Shield attorneys, he promptly gave us a check for $1,152. Worry less and live more with LSProtection.com. That's LSProtection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, bring up whatever you want. You can do it toll free here at 855 453. That's 855 450 3733. Join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Perhaps you would like to share with us your thoughts on this shocking, um, horrible story where a uh, homeowner has shot two teenagers to death as they came into his basement. He presumed they were there to rob him. He'd been robbed previously by allegedly these two teens. Apparently there is some evidence to verify at least that claim. And maybe he was in fear for his life. Or maybe he is just somebody who wanted to get away with killing some people. In this case, he didn't get away with it. He's been convicted of, is it two counts of murder? Pre premeditated first degree murder? Two counts of first and second degree murder. So both. Uh, Those are the teens. So two teenagers were shot to death, 
And this man is in his 60s now, mid-60s. He's probably going to prison for the rest of his life, would be my guess. Yeah, I suspect he is. Uh, you know, I mean, nothing makes you matter than um, not much. There's, there's not much in the world that's going to make you matter than a burglary. You know, having your house invaded, mm-hmm. um, defiled by someone else who has no care for it. You've spent, in some cases, a lifetime putting together this house in whatever way it is that you've got it. And then some... 18 year old 17 year old jackball who hasn't uh, ever worked a job or done anything of value in his life comes in kicks your door in, in steals mm-hmm. your stuff the things you've worked hard for not much makes you matter than that i'd say rape is worse than that uh, and murder but besides that uh, but you you know you could be raped and murdered in a home invasion as well I mean, many people many that. people who have been burglarized have not been raped or murdered so they don't have a scale to uh, to claim that yeah. right um you know or or have have I'm just saying those two things come to mind as uh, as They're immediately worse. But you know, if you're having your home invaded, there's a good chance that the men with the guns that you know, presuming if the invaders have weapons, that they could hold those weapons on you or your wife or whoever and uh, and harm the the people. I mean, he I think would have had a good excuse to say he didn't know what these people were capable of. That they could have been armed, they could have been out to get him. Apparently, whatever his story was, it wasn't good enough to convince a jury they found him guilty of murder we're going to go back to your phone calls and your thoughts on this and if you value your online privacy you really need to take a look at pro xpn and there's no reason why you shouldn't because there's a free account so you can just go to pro xpn.com slash ftl and get started tonight what they provide primarily is encryption services it's a private uh, virtual private network it's global you connect to one of their servers your uh, the pro xpn software encrypts all your data that leaves your computer and whatever it is that's coming into your computer from the isp that way your internet service provider is no longer aware of what you're doing online so whatever it is you're downloading whichever websites you're going to they're no longer able to log that information if you're using pro xpn if you're not using pro xpn they're probably keeping logs of all your activities of uh, somewhere up to five years depending on uh, which company you're ordering services through. So you can stop them from snooping on you by going to proxpn.com slash FTL. Plus, it'll also protect you in places like, uh, you know, a coffee shop or in another country, uh, people sniffing out your Wi-Fi packets. This encryption is very, very good to keep your privacy safe. So go to proxpn.com slash FTL and get started there. You can download the software for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, or Android devices. And uh, setups different for Linux. You can contact their support team and they'll help you out through that. It's actually not complicated at all using Linux. So anyway, proxpn.com slash FTL. Use our discount code when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account for unlimited bandwidth. Servers around the world to which you can connect. You can privately torrent with their uh, premium account. ProXPN.com slash FTL. The code you need is FTL20, which gets you 20% off for the lifetime of your account. That's FTL20 at ProXPN.com slash FTL. There's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. You have nothing to lose but your privacy. And they don't keep logs of your online surfing habits. Let's go to your calls and thoughts. Nate is listening online. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Nate. Hey, guys. Thanks hey. for having me on. Sure. Go ahead. Um you know, I can definitely agree with, you know, I, I don't see all the evidence in this case. Um, you know, I think as many of us don't, but we see the aftermath and the effect of it. Um, but, yeah, as the other caller had said, I mean, if he waited 24 hours to report anything, I mean, that's a little outside of reason, wouldn't you say? I'm thinking that he was toying with the idea of just um, Covering disposing, it up. Yeah, disposing of the bodies his own way, and then he realized that he wasn't going to get away it's with it. It's a really it. bad idea, right? <laughs> Of course, had he known, yeah. well, what, had what he happened known to the well, vehicle? But wait, what? Whatever, whatever would have happened to him, or excuse me, had he known what would have happened to him, ultimately, maybe he should have gone ahead and tried to cover up the uh, the killings. I mean, he he ended up getting convicted of murder, two charges of murder, four charges, excuse me, uh, of murder in this particular case. Yeah, so, there's something wrong with uh, Johnny's reporting there. You can't get first degree and second degree murder charges for uh, killing somebody. It's what they call a lesser included offense. Hmm. Okay, so convicted there, of two murder. Charges. I would say there's a mur- murder one and a murder two charge would be my guess, which I, I'm I'm a little skeptical on the murder two charge for the first guy. I really think that um, you know I'd like to know more about how this you know second murder went down or second shooting went down with the uh, with the gal, mm-hmm. and uh, obviously waiting 24 hours is you know this exacerbating circumstance. Guilty jurors began deliberating Tuesday morning and within three hours had a verdict: colon 
guilty on two counts each of first degree and second degree murder. It's just bizarre. I, I just I, I, I can't understand that. Go ahead, Nate. Well, that means, sorry, that means the jury agreed that it was premeditated. That's right. That's correct. That he decided to murder these individuals ahead of time. So, I mean, and that's a big statement there in itself. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, really, yeah, an atrocity for the kids. But, you know, once again, you know, you shouldn't be breaking into people's houses, you know. So do you uh, think this but, man should have been convicted of murder? Uh, no, nah, I, you know, that's why, like I said, you know, you have to be there and considering all the evidence that they're bringing up. You know, I mean, like, we're only getting a story from, you know, what other people have accounted. Sure. Or maybe we can look at some court documents. But, you know, I mean, a lot of this comes down to, you know, what came out as evidence. Like they said, you know, um, like this, uh, the last caller had said about that he, he spent over 24 hours waiting. I mean, that's plenty of time to clean up. Like, you know, is there any guarantee that he actually killed them in his basement? You know, it's, it's, it's pretty apparently weird. Apparently there's video footage. Oh, oh, ouch. Yeah, apparently there's surveillance well, camera footage of the, the murders, uh, of alleged well, murders you know, being taken, uh, taking place. Well, I can't say that our jurors have been made really well-educated decisions throughout the years. Yeah. Um, you know, but, yeah, I mean, if they got video evidence and everything like that, I mean, I understand, you know, you you have the right. Everybody should have the right to defend themselves, mm -hmm. you know, no matter what the case is. I mean, because you don't know what's happening. And you do you have to out. wait? Let's say, okay, basements, typically dark place. We don't know if, uh, if the lights were on, you know, if you've got a big, good lighting system. My basement has not good lighting at all. Um, lots of basements, kind of dark, dank places. He's sitting in the basement. He's got his gun pointed at the uh, the stairwell. Sees the teenager come down the stairwell. Do you have to wait until you see a gun in someone's hand and they menace you with it before you can shoot somebody with a gun in your house? That's always the tough line, right? You know, what do we do in that situation? When that or, situation arrives where right. you have to take action. Or is it know, what, they're in your house you don't know if they have a weapon. Presume they do because they are not coming in nicely to your home. So presume they're armed and dangerous and act accordingly. Apparently, you can't do that. Well, or if you wait too long after you do it, then you'll get convicted of murder. This there, is there was a case out in Texas where um, a homeowner who was uh, you know basically charged with watching his his neighbor's home um, mm -hmm. you know caught a couple of guys in the you know midst of robbing the the house uh, burglarizing the house mm -hmm. and um, he shot him in the back as they were fleeing. Oh wow! And um, you know that was that was a case of some renown. I don't remember what the results and were. And did he get convicted? I I couldn't. Okay. I, like I said, I don't know what the results were. But it's always interesting to look at each one of these. Now these guys are adult Mexicans, not um, young white kids. Mm. And you know, I I, I gotta say, I think that the I think the news tends to to factor in on these things. I mean, you know, these are, they. It's stuff that people can relate to. Their they're con, they're consuming audience can relate to. Nate, so. thanks for your call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you with your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype open for you. If you dial in on Skype, you can connect to username lrn.fm. Did this man commit murder? I mean, he clearly premeditated. He clearly thought this out. But was it actually murder? This is Free Talk Live. All right, hold on, hold on. We got to interrupt the regularly scheduled stuff for just a minute. I've got to tell you about this because it's weird. It'll make sense. What if I told you that eating this one weird spice could actually help you reverse diabetes? I know it's crazy, right? Well, if you or somebody you care about has diabetes or prediabetes or metabolic, met, bleh, easy for me to say, metabolic syndrome, you've got to check out this video. It's free. You may have heard about this. People who've tried it say that they've been able to normalize their blood sugar, stop taking their diabetes meds, and their doctors are all for it. So what is it? What's behind this? Well, the company says it's a natural drug-free approach to reversing diabetes, and they say that it works in as little as four weeks, and it all starts with this one weird kitchen spice you probably have in your kitchen right now. So you should check out the free video and see for yourself. It's at weirdspice55.com. So write that down. It's weirdspice55.com. weirdspice55.com. 
Hey everyone, have you heard about the No No Hair Removal Device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host, Cheryl, for No No Hair Removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my No No. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No No has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the No-No, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible No-No hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-6062. That's 800-953-6062. 800-953-6062. Coplock.org slash pivothead. To ensure that a record of the truth of police interactions exists and is accessible, we each need to fill. That's why we're happy to announce the Accountability Through Transparency video contest, the winner of which will receive a pair of Pivothead sunglasses. For more information and to submit your video entry, go to cutblock.org slash pivothead. One, document with a camera a police employee exhibiting double standards or the standards we expect them to live up to. This can be done while on foot, during a vehicle stop, while submitting an open records request, etc. 2. Upload your video to your YouTube channel. 3. Fill out the form at copblock.org slash pivothead by the deadline of midnight Eastern Standard Time, May 23rd, 2014. 4. The winner, chosen by contest sponsors, will be notified by email and the Pivothead sunglasses will be shipped once a mailing address is received. Copblock.org slash pivothead. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and we are inviting you here to take control of the airwaves. You don't have to talk about the story on the table. We always have stuff we bring in to talk about, but you can bring up anything that you'd like. The toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. And don't forget, we've got Skype. Skype in to username LRN.FM to get your thoughts on the air here with us. Johnny Ray brought in a story out of Minnesota tonight involving a a homeowner, 65-year-old man, I believe it was. I don't know how old he is. He's in his 60s. I think it was 65 in the story. Yeah, that's what I recall. He's uh, been convicted now of first-degree murder, two counts of it, it sounds like with uh, uh, the murder, alleged murder, of a couple of young people who'd come into his home who were supposedly there to do a burglar, uh, burglary. And uh, they apparently had been there in the past at once. Broke a wind- broke a sliding glass door, is that right? I got a noob question, Mark. Uh, I, no, I don't know about the... Uh, that's. I said that, but I might have been making it up at okay. the beginning. And now my noob question Let's is... stop uh, doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, is uh, what's the... Di- what's... First degree murder and what second degree murder? First degree is premeditated murder. You have to have thought about it, come to a conclusion. That's what you're going to do. Right, hey, like, Joe, where are you going with that gun in your hand? I'm going to shoot my old lady. Caught her messing around with another man. There you First go. Gr- degree murder. Or in this case, where he uh, expected they were going to come into his home, he went down into the basement to lie in wait for them and, uh, and blasted them. And that sounded pretty premeditated to me. 
yeah. second degree is just in the heat of the moment, wherein you know you, the old cla- the classic find your lover in the bed with their lover kind of uh, scenario, and then it blows up into a murder. That's gonna happen to me someday. That's that's how I'm gonna go. <laughs> You're gonna be the one caught. The yeah. Bed? Yeah. Uh, Anyway, let's leave that one alone. Uh, so want to hear your thoughts, 855-450 free. Let's go back to the phones and uh, get your ideas here. Let's go to Rob in Virginia. You're on Free Talk Live. Rob. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hey, what's on your mind? I think, I think the jury system is more like the best thing the English world has ever invented. But reading over real quick this box story, it, it just looks like, it was an emotional decision by the uh, jury. They they didn't get to see the evidence that the kids had broken into the guy's house before. That was excluded. That's a problem. And this guy's kind of a nut. He set up an audio thing. He knew they were coming. And that doesn't mean that that's not premeditated murder if you can predict that a violent felony is going to occur and you prepare. A burglary isn't a violent felony. It could no, be it violent. Is by definition. What's common, that? No, the common law, I mean, I don't live in Minnesota. If it's, I don't know if it's a statute, but burglary is a common law violent felony. If you enter somebody's home, it's presumed to be violent. It's just by the nature of the crime. All right. I have never it heard that before, be but I'll take your word for it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just English common law. It could be each state can make its own law, but, you know, in, in just normal English law. You know, arson is considered a violent felony, even if there's nobody around. So is this burglary because of the potential for violence if you break in somebody's right. house. I don't think it's unreasonable to believe that anybody breaking into your home will also have the intention of hurting you if they encounter you. I mean, that's not true for all people b- breaking in, but it's not unreasonable to believe that could be true. And I wanted to know what breaking right. is. Now, I, when Johnny Ray was talking about them coming in, I had the impression that they had broken a window, a sliding glass door to get in, um, and that's a... I don't know if that's. I want to know how allow, they came allow in. Allow me, allow me, Mark. The audio, which was played several times in court, captured the sound of glass shattering. Okay. Then the sounds of Smith shooting Brady three times as he descended the basement stairs. Hmm. Smith can be heard saying, "You're dead." Prosecutors said Smith put Brady's body on a tarp and dragged him into another room. Then sat down, reloaded his weapon, and waited. So it sounds like they smashed right. the glass to open the doors. Yeah, like sounds that. that way. It was a violent attack into a man's home. A man's home is his castle. He doesn't have an obligation to retreat. He doesn't have an obligation to say, gee, teenagers who've broken in my home previously, do you have a weapon or do you intend me harm? If you break into somebody's house, the risk is on you. The, 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 the burden of proof is not on him. And what happened here is this guy is kind of a John Wayne guy, and he said all kinds of tough guy stuff afterwards. He said, like, you're a vermin and yeah. you're dying now. And so the, the, in my view, this was a jury emotional decision. They heard, you know, they saw the families and the, of the poor teenage kids. And, you know, this guy is being all John Wayne and all Clint Eastwood well, on the tape. Motive, motive matters in crimes. Guy. I mean, motive, motive makes a difference in crimes. It's a difference between an automobile accident and vehicular homicide, right? Like, there's a – the motive matters. And what this individual, if he's saying, you're dying now, you stinking piece of vermin, I'm, you're going to go to hell. Like, I mean, <laughs> it, it gives a frame of mind. And I, I've got to say that it, if a man's protecting himself and his home, that's one thing. If a man is waiting for an opportunity for somebody to come in and blast their head off, he's in the wrong frame of mind. Now, I'm not claiming that he should go to prison for murder, but, I, you know, like I... I really well, I have, a, I have a problem with that, too. I understand why somebody could be angry at the people who just broke into uh, Me too. one's home. Do you understand that there's nothing in that home that's worth killing anyone over? I uh, tend to well, agree. Any, I, but that's not the point, that, Mark. We're not talking about just a straight-up uh, thieving here. We're talking about this guy could have been afraid for his life. He was in the home at that time. It's a, it's a great excuse for everything. So you're saying you wouldn't convict, convict them of murder or him of murder? Well, what I think would you the, do? Well, the very problem here is is that I would set every courthouse in America on fire because these uh, these the jury system is not the best thing the English common law gave us. It's a it's a disaster to put a bunch of uneducated fools out there trying to decide what's just. These people have no business making their minds up. However, 
If you're asking me, I would like to see a system, um, you know, where he's in some way censured for this. And I don't know what the answer is. I don't know what he has, you know, what what it is. But it seems like there's this is too much. He has used too much force in this circumstance, in my opinion. Can we can we talk about the jury system for just a second? Sure. sure. Okay. As somebody who's well, I guess one of you guys has been convicted wrongly of a felony. I think I, I have very little exposure to you, my Mark. I love your show. Okay. Um, you know, I feel it's pretty bogus to be in the king's dock with the you know the king's resources against you, unlimited, and uh, and your life is in the hands of another one of the state's employees. You know, that's the, the judge is sitting there, you know, who's on the state payroll, yep. uh, you know, is there with the state prosecutor with the state budget against you and what your family might have been able to put up to hopefully save your life. You know, when they came up with that thing in the Magna Carta, that was great. You know, hey, I want the butcher and the and the yeah, they're uneducated. But, uh, you know, it, more times than, than not, the jury, you know, comes out with the right thing. It, my point I don't is, know, I mean, man. I, I, I disagree with your statement that the jury comes out with the right thing. However, I will agree with you that prior to 1900 with the uh, sort of the socialist revolution, um, you know, really catching steam, that, um, yeah, juries did a really great job of holding back uh, the growth of government in both criminal and civil cases. But I think that here in this country, and I don't know what it's like around the rest of the world, but in this country, we've become a bunch of sycophants that just say, uh-huh, to the prosecution, whether it's uh, at a grand jury or at, uh, um, you know, a is it called a petit jury, the regular jury? Yeah, petit jury. A petit jury. Um, I, you know, the evidence is that two-thirds of felonies are found guilty. And that mean and and I've seen juries return awful verdicts and multiple fewer, times. Fewer than one percent of cases actually get to a jury trial. That means that uh, is the caller still there? He's here. Okay. Um, that means that of that one percent that gets to trial, two thirds are found guilty. I would think that the guilt that the innocent people would probably go all the way to trial because they're innocent, and that you you should have at least less than fifty percent. But no, the juries are finding them guilty. Well, I, I, as someone who's you know been in a courtroom and been found guilty of things I wasn't guilty of, and uh, and had all that against me, I, I I can sympathize with your point, but I don't think that your 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 basis is that only innocent people take it all the way. No, to, it's not my trial. basis. I wouldn't I wouldn't claim that for a second. My claim is in fact that the jury system, the justice system, is so absolutely corrupt that a vast majority of innocent people take a plea bargain. That's how messed up juries are. Well, they can't, you can't trust them. Well, I, I, I agree with everything you said. Up to that's how messed up juries are. I think the system is, here in Virginia is certainly rigged against a, a person who's accused. Uh, we, we, the defense does not have a, a lot of the protections that it have in other states, and and the system is rigged against you. But I think the bulwark, the the bulwark for a free innocent person is a jury, a grand jury. It's almost gone now. but A flimsy but jury it is. A flimsy bulwark it is, my friend. Well, having 6 to 12 regular people, you know, that's the only thing that stands between you and it's just a, a steamroller of the state. Rob, I have to say, I agree with the things you're saying. I agree with the concept that juries could put a stop to wrongful prosecution. If they took some responsibility, and but in this world where people turn over responsibilities in areas that they're not experts to other people, this uh, this allocation of resources sort of uh, economy, people say, oh, the prosecutor and the cops must know what they're doing. And that's why I regularly do outreach to juries to try to inform them of their rights. Uh, called uh, One of their rights is the right to nullify verdicts. We can talk more about that coming up here. Rob, thanks for the call tonight. More on the way. It's Free Talk Live. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. I travel for work during the week, and it's tough being away from home. But America's Best Value Inn treats me like family with free Internet so I can keep up with work and those back home. A continental breakfast in the morning and instant rewards with the Value Club so I can save more money at most of their 1,000 hotels in North America. 
If you travel for work, go to AmericasBestValueIn.com and discover the best value on the road. MeowBit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. MeowBit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of name coin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, MeowBit. Go to MeowBit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, April 29th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.35 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,289 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $448. Antiwar.com reports, Egypt's military junta continues to move forward with mass trials of those involved in public protest against last summer's coup and yesterday sentenced another 683 protesters to death for inciting violence. Among those sentenced was the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood, Mohamed Badi, whose political wing was the elected government of Egypt until being ousted last year by the military. The exact same judge was in charge of the first mass trials last month, which quickly concluded with the death sentence for all 529 detainees. The judge was handed the case of 683 protesters sentenced just a day after the first verdict. 715 more suspected Islamists are being held in a third mass trial related to the protest, and 204 more are facing the same inciting violence charge in a fourth mass trial. Though the United States has been somewhat critical of the mass execution orders, but has followed onto that criticism by freeing up massive amounts of military aid for the junta, suggesting that whatever theoretical problems they might have with executing protesters by the thousands, they don't amount to much on a policy front. You've heard of ShinyBadges.com, but you need to check out the New Causes tab. Every item in that section includes a donation to a worthy Liberty Project, like Shire Sharing. So go to ShinyBadges.com, click on the New Causes tab, and get yourself a quality product that not only supports the cause you believe in, but starts a conversation with your neighbors. Plus, get a free gift when you pay with Bitcoin at ShinyBadges.com. RT reports, the Supreme Court will hear two cases to determine the legality of police searching cell phones without a warrant at the time of an arrest. The landmark cases pit the Obama administration against civil rights advocates who say police are conducting illegal search and seizures. In the digital age, about 90% of Americans own a cell phone and 58% have a smartphone. A legal battle is raging behind the scenes as to whether cell phones should be protected under the Fourth Amendment, which forbids unreasonable searches and seizures without a warrant, or should the technology become fair game for police following an arrest. The question will be considered in the cases of Riley v. California and United States v. Worry. In the past, courts have granted police the authority to search possessions of arrested individuals for two reasons, determining the individual is not carrying a weapon and to prevent the destruction of evidence like narcotics. The question of cell phones, they argue, does not fit into either category. Jeffrey Fisher, the lawyer for Riley, pointed to FBI statistics showing some 12 million Americans were arrested in 2012 alone, mostly over minor crimes like jaywalking, littering, or riding a bicycle the wrong direction on a residential street. 
Fisher believes it would be wrong that police would have the authority to search a person's cell phone without first getting a court order to provide a warrant, saying the digital contents of a smartphone are categorically incapable of threatening police officer safety, and once police have seized and secured a cell phone, there is no risk that the arrestee might destroy or alter its digital contents. Such files hold exponentially greater amounts and types of sensitive personal information than any physical item. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. NPR reports the United Church of Christ is joining the national debate on the future of gay marriage in a novel way. The church filed a lawsuit on Monday challenging North Carolina's ban on same-sex marriage, saying Amendment 1 violates the church's constitutional guarantee to freedom of religion. According to the church, this is likely the first challenge by a national Christian denomination of a state's gay marriage ban. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Following the news this week that recording artist and industry magnet Bob Dylan would be laying off 2,000 workers from his Muscatine, Iowa songwriting factory in an effort to streamline his music-making operations, The Onion spoke with veteran factory worker Travis Felton, who received a pink slip earlier today. I've been working on the lyric assembly line for 25 years now. Punch in each and every morning, make sure the words are complex and poetic. And yesterday, the foreman calls me into his office to tell me that the company is reducing headcount. They're giving the whole rhyming section the boot. What Mr. Dillon and the other suits don't understand is that here in Muscatine, songwriting is all we have. And we've been doing the best damn Dillon songs in the world for over 50 years. And now they're trying to take that away from us. I don't know what I'm supposed to do next. Well, I... Guess I could see if they're hiring over at the Tom Petty factory in Hurstville. Lord knows I hoped it'd never come to that. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Launching into the second hour of the program here. We'll take your calls about whatever's on your mind. Coming up, Johnny Ray will tell us about a government bureaucrat who hates e-cigarettes. And is it going to be an article from him or about him? It's about what he said. All right, so we'll get into that here in a little bit. Your call's welcome at 855-450-FREE. Uh, Ian, Mark, Johnny Ray, all here. We'll take your calls about anything. You can also join us on Skype at username lrn.fm. couple updates for you here. Number one, the story about the judge who has, um, well, he's in trouble now, and he's been sentenced for conspiring with private prisons to sentence juvenile offenders to maximum sentences in return for bribes and kickbacks from his buddies in the private prison industry. The story is from examiner.com. Pennsylvania judge Mark Sia Varela Jr. sentenced to 28 years in prison for the conspiracy, also ordered to pay $1.2 million in restitution. In the private prison industry, the more time an inmate spends in the facility, the more of a profit is reaped from the state. Sia Varela was a figurehead in the conspiracy in the state of Pennsylvania, which saw thousands of young men and women unjustly punished and penalized in the name of corporate profit. According to allgov.com, Sia Varelli's cases from 2003 to 2008 were reviewed by a special investigative panel and later by the Pennsylvania Supreme Court and was found that upwards of 5,000 young men and women were denied their constitutional rights and therefore all of their convictions were dismissed and they were summarily released. During his sentencing, Sia Varela was defiant, claiming he had broken no laws and claimed the money he had received was a legitimate Finder's fee, but I guess Finder's fee. I guess the judge in that case disagreed. It, uh, it's now 28 years in prison for Mr. Mark C. Everella Jr. 
Seems like this is uh, this story's been going on a long time. I remember, you know, the sort of turning over and turning over mm-hmm. a couple of uh, different, um, you know, different times. Uh, I remember when we broke this. Uh, I don't know, probably been a couple of years ago. A couple of years, yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, this is this doesn't make people very comfortable with the whole judicial system where people are. Uh, uh, you know, where judges are getting kickbacks for kids being sent to prison to, uh, you know, youth homes or whatever. Well, yeah. And again, you have to wonder uh, what else has this judge done in his likely decades of service? Uh, the picture here, he looks like an older guy. So he's been he's been at this judging thing for a long time. What other sort of back scratching deals has he cooked up? In, over those years. In the last segment, we were talking with a caller about his um, um, love for the jury system over. Um, and I think what he was saying was is he prefers the jury system over other systems around the world. And I think that um, this is correct. Right. Like the English common law system has been shown sort of to, you know, to be the best as far as uh, most moral system out there. But I think it needs a lot of work because. The juries are respecting guys like these judges. I mean, you got to admit, the judge is the referee, and the referee really matters in a game. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be a rare situation where a jury stands up to a judge and says, you're a bad guy. Um, the, the, total ju- the whole judicial system's corrupt. It's uh, centered around, uh, you know, this jury system, which is supposed to keep, hold everybody in check, and it does none of that. I think that the best I can come up with is we need competing judicial systems Mm. we need a system where people sir that's unconstitutional well it probably is unconstitutional yeah Yeah. Um, some some sort of uh radical change like that to the system would likely be overturned by the judicial system absolutely judicial systems a monopoly and monopolies are you know very quick to uh to not want competition but we have seen arbitration uh organizations come up it's true in civil you usually agree to an arbitrator in most um, kind of cell phone contracts, for instance, lots of contracts that you'll sign just to get some sort of thing to do business, credit card, cell phone, whatever, usually you're agreeing to arbitration clauses in there. And I don't know, I don't trust uh, civilians in the jury system to uh, decide what the best punishment for a crime is or ha- decide who's guilty and who's innocent. No, I don't. I, I, don't. I want to. I want to be able to trust. I want a jury to evoke thoughts of compassion towards the accused. I want them to be, uh, you know, judicious. I want them to, to carefully consider the evidence. Well, then I want why don't them- we have brain surgery by jury? Why don't we have rocket science by jury? What do we want uninformed, uneducated people doing jo- an important job for? Come on. I mean, this is something— Well, the idea is they're supposed to be your is, peers. This is inculcated. This is about as—this um, th- makes about as much sense as red, white, and blue cupcakes making you patriotic. It doesn't make any sense at all. The fact is what we need is we need professionals competing for our business in the area of justice. Yeah, that's a big change you're proposing. It's a huge change. In the meantime, between now and that utopian and sort what? of vision for the future, I'll continue focusing my efforts on the existing juries and attempt to share with them the idea of jury nullification. How's that gone? It's, uh, you know, people are very happy to take the information from me. I normally will go out in front of a courthouse. I'll be doing it probably in a couple weeks here. For how many years Keene. have you done this? A few years. Several, yeah. maybe? Several, several years. years you've been going out. I started doing it when I was in Florida. So well, I mean, but you've done it every single almost, jury. Almost. There was one last month where they changed the jury date the week of, and I didn't find out until it was too late. Your dedication is unimpeachable. I've done okay. my best. Yeah. To so, reach every possible potential juror with the information about jury nullification. And so far, with your knowledge, which is pretty good of what goes on in keen courts have you seen one nullification in the years the several years you've been doing that's it? the thing i don't do the checking so i don't know i would have to re- i would have to rely on someone to tell me oh hey i nullified someone's verdict which of course there's there hasn't been any contact information at nhjury.com until just recently i just recently took over the website and added some contact info to it so there would have been no way to actually reach me with any of that information. I'd love they to know if there was one single not on guilty. On the street. The other thing is a lot of cases don't ever make it to a jury. So it's it's, but it's, you're, you're it's still, pretty no, rare no. that a jury gets selected here, number wait one. A second. And wait, number wait, wait, two, wait, a in... lot of those cases aren't necessarily cases where nullification should be made. Sure. Because it might actually be violent crimes. Several years you've been doing this. Yeah. And 
Um, at this point, you have no knowledge of a single nullification. Not necessarily directly from my outreach. We do know that uh, the uh, Pete Nadamo case out of Greenfield, Massachusetts, was a nullification by jury. Yep. We know one, that one. One guy um, in not in this state, uh, you know, managed to do it. And that wasn't was there jury nullification outreach at that event? I believe there was. OK, great. That's awesome to know that there was one guy that was in a different state um, that uh, might have. Uh, so it can happen. It, I'm not saying it can't. I'm just saying that, look, what my experience is, is that people do what they're told. That they, they do what they're told by experts. And it's this true. Is the man out. in the robe says you need to do this. So they do it, even though the information they're being given. And by the way, not only in New Hampshire have we given out information to jurors, but we've also, in certain cases, explicitly given the jury information about jury nullification during the case. So normally, if, we're, if it's not a case involving an activist who's been targeted, like, say, a friend of uh, the show Rich Paul – uh, in, in Rich Paul's case, he had a defense attorney who specifically talked about jury nullification to the jury. We can do that here in New Hampshire. In most states, it's illegal for you to talk to the jury about nullification as a defendant or an attorney. So in those cases even, where the jury was given even more than just a flyer, they were given specific detail about jury nullification during the trial, where they had their entire attention on the person giving them that detail. They still convicted the activist in those cases. Yep, I just... Sorry, I don't trust it's, these people. It's really disappointing I'm, to see I, this happen. I don't trust the again process. and again. Over over and over again, I see the police um, involved in planning evidence. Over and over again, I see prosecutors hiding evidence. Over and over again, I see judges on the take. Um, I see jurors on a regular basis deferring to the authority of these people. I, I'm sorry, I just can't trust this system at all. Let's go to David. He's in Virginia, listening to WSVG in Mount Jackson. Hey, David. Good evening, fellas. How are you? Great. What's on your mind tonight? Well, you know, I was listening to you talk about this this juvenile court judge. We have similar. Well, I think we have similar problems down here in Virginia. Let me let me tell you a quick story. Virginia actually tried to throw me in jail one time for four months for paying my child support in advance. Oh God! It's illegal to pay your child support in advance in Virginia. Wow. So they charge you with failing to obey a court order because your court order probably doesn't allow you to pay it in advance. David, I want you to hang on and tell us the rest of your story here in a moment. We're going to come back to you. Okay. 855-450 free. You take control here on Free Talk Live. Everybody wants to know, what can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is. And it's at bitcoingeneralstore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything with free shipping. What can you find at BitcoinGeneralStore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. you got to see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237.
In local news, 23-year-old graffiti artist Adam Zane has captured the heart of 19-year-old college sophomore Jessica Tissolo. Zane, who goes by the graffiti handle Slice, met Tissolo last summer at an annoyingly self-aware dive bar where the talentless artist caught Tissolo's eye with his cliched sleeve tattoos of trite Japanese imagery and the fact that he was wearing a winter hat indoors in the middle of June. His art is really just the absolute worst. I think we're going to get married someday. And now for This Week in Tech, brought to you by LG. An excited groom sends text messages to his buddies during his bride's vows. And a collection of VHS tapes are held onto for one more year. In other news, a burglar makes sure to crack the glass on a family portrait before leaving. There's nothing in the employee handbook about groping dead co-workers, an employee says. And a report finds that nobody's heard from David Blaine in a while, so somebody should probably check to see if he died in one of those things. Mere seconds have passed, yet we feel as though we've known you a thousand lifetimes. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, we will take your calls if you make them about whatever is on your mind. Toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us on our website over at freetalklive.com. We've got a lot of features there. You can enjoy them all for free archives and more. freetalklive.com. Sherry's Berries is back with Free Talk Live, and you can get giant Freshly dipped strawberries that's dipped in white chocolate, dark chocolate, and milk chocolate as well. From Sherry's Berries, just for nineteen ninety nine. There's some shipping costs going to be added into that as well, but you get to choose on which day you would want delivery. Do you want to deliver these things on Mother's Day? I believe they offer. Do they offer that on Sunday? Do they offer Sunday? Oh delivery? yeah, they'll do, they'll deliver it on Mother's Day. That's amazing. Uh, that's just the level of service is incredible. Now uh, you can also deliver it earlier than that if you'd like to save a little bit of money on the shipping. These things come cold, by the way. That you open up this box from Sherry's Berries, and uh, it's been shipped to you quick. I believe they're using overnight shipping. So the what you pay for the shipping is actually pretty good considering how fast uh, they ship these berries. I mean, they, they and things, they're delicious. Yeah, they come out of the shop. They uh, they're delicious. They're coated in chocolate and uh, swizz, decorative swizzle chocolate chips or nuts. Um, my personal favorite's the white chocolate, but it's really hard to pick a favorite. Between, You're going to want to eat at least two of each just, just, just to make just, sure, just to come to <laughs> just to come to the conclusion. Right, and uh, so again, you can get the giant freshly dipped strawberries from Sherry's Berries for just 19.99. That's over 40 percent savings. But I would recommend you go ahead and double the berries for ten dollars more. You are not going to want to get half the, the the half order. You're going to want to get the double order uh, because once you have three of these berries you're going to want to have three more and then you're going to want to have three more and at some point you should stop yourself just so you can have some more berries for the next day uh, that's kind of what i have to do is because it would be so easy to just continue eating them yeah you're going to eat yourself like sort of oh oh you know it's it's your sure. tum- you're going to eat awesome. this yeah your tummy's going to be sort of upset if you eat as many as you want to what you need to know is the uh, the discount code so use code FTL when you place your order that also helps us get credit for sending them the business berries.com b e r r i e s.com click the microphone in the top right type in FTL go to berries.com mothers day coming up is it next sunday well it's not the next sunday it's the sunday after next and that's what i 
you know, I'm always confused about how to say it's that. It's the second Sunday in May. Yeah, I agree with you. That is confusing. Second Not this Sunday. coming Sunday, but second. the following Sunday. That's correct. So you've got a little bit of time to get the order in, but better to just get your order in now. Again, you can schedule the delivery dates. It's not like you have to target a certain time for ordering this. Just go right now to berries.com, click the mic, type in FTL, and get that special deal. Remember, you can double the berries for just $10 more over top of the $19.99 regular price. And uh, again, use code FTL at berries.com. The deal, by the way, expires oh this Friday at midnight. So you do have a limited time on this one. Indeed. All it's right. well worth it. Upgrade. I Let's love it. Spend them. the extra 10 I'm bucks. I'm a huge fan. I'm so glad Sherry's Berries is on board with Free Talk Live. Let's go to uh, David, or back to David in Virginia, listening to Mount Jackson's WSVG. David, you were saying you got a contempt of court situation because you were under orders to make child support payments. You made one early, and apparently the judge... Four uh, months early. Yeah. Several you, early. You, you made a, a payment early, and apparently that was against the judge's order, so they came after you. Go well, ahead and tell it, us more. It, well, yeah, and, and, you know, I got divorced, I think, in the middle 80s, um, and when I was starting to pay child support, I was unaware that it was illegal to pay your child support in advance in Virginia. And, in fact, um, I started doing that because I had seasonal work, so I oh, yeah. paid— a, a lot more when I had the money and, and didn't pay during those months. I wasn't charged with contempt of court for missing payments. I was charged before I started to miss because I was making multiple payments. And and so a judge attempted to put me in jail for four months. Fortunately, a circuit court judge in a new trial said, well, this is stupid and dismissed yeah. it. Nonetheless, a legislator in 2006 here in Virginia introduced legislation to make it specifically legal for you to pay in advance, and it was killed in committee. So it <laughs> wow. remains illegal wow. in Virginia to pay your child support. What is the reason for this? Pay. Is there any well, kind of I'm rationale? You, oh, yeah. It is financial. Um I did not know this when I first started to pay child support, as I, I know most people probably do are, are unaware of this, but there are tons of federal financial incentives paid to the state merely for collecting child support. The, the incentive rate for current child support is $0.66. Cents. So, uh, you know, for every dollar that you put in, the federal government gives the state government – 66 cents to go into its general fund. And of course, when Virginia started collecting support, they also, uh, to, to recoup monies for uh, those children who were on welfare, they discovered that those incentives weren't limited only to children who were on welfare. So they started collecting everybody's support. They enacted a statute that all child support must go through Virginia. Had to has to go through Virginia. But the, the kicker is, so to me, it's a conflict of interest for Virginia to even set child support amounts because the, the higher they set the support, the more money and incentives they get. Mm. But what I found out later when this thing happened, when they tried to put me in jail, was Virginia wants you to fall behind, as do all state agencies who collect child support. They want you to fall behind because if they collect back due support or the interest the state's charged, the financial incentive rate for the feds rises to 90 percent. Mm. So for when I started to fight them after they put me in jail, when I just put the brakes on paying support at all, mm. I found out that my $519 in child support that would be transmitted to DCSE, they'd cash my check, reissue it to my ex-wife in the whole amount, the federal government would give the state government $348 a month. It's incredible. To collect my support. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, the, the judge thing up in Scranton, Pennsylvania, I thought they ought to hang the guy. But there is, you know, it's not just private jails who are collecting money. I mean, oh, yeah. the, the way it works here in Virginia, the state government pays the local government to hold people in jail here. So in a lot of jails in Virginia, the highest jail population are not criminals. They're people charged with civil child support offenses because the sentence in Virginia mandates that they have to stay in that jail for up to 12 months. Sure. So they don't get good time credit. They don't get anything like you would 
if you are an actual criminal, you get day for day criminal, uh, day for day uh, credit. So load up the jails with uh, people late on child support, marijuana smokers, people doing other things that don't have a victim, yep. uh, prostitution, gambling. Load up the jails with these people and just keep run, rolling the money out. I mean, it's just an it's endless prison, money train. Prison industrial complex. Thank you, David, for your call Last tonight. I appreciate. To- mm-hmm. Go ahead. You're welcome. Well, I just wanted to say I'm very, I'm pleased because I was an early adopter of you guys. I used to listen to you on stream here before SDG picked you up. Oh, wow, I'm cool. Impressed, I'm impressed that you're getting mainstream talk radio sponsors like Sherry's Berries. That's very cool to me. Awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it, too, just well, because they're delicious. And uh, <laughs> they thank, thank you for the call, David. I appreciate it. Take hey, care. since he brought it up, you can go to berries.com, type in code FTL. After clicking the microphone in the top right, get yourself a heck of a deal on some delicious berries. Yeah, if you, you think it's great that Sherry's uh, Berries is advertising on Free Talk Live, please support us. I like a good gift that you can eat, and this is a darn good one. It is a good uh, one. We'll come back with more here on Free Talk Live. It's, you take control. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terragonics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terragonics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free, 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM-1 from Terragonics. Life's getting better. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. So it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way. 
love as your guide, and liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want. Just dial toll-free to 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You may Skype in. The username that you'll need to connect to is lrn.fm. Just send a contact request over. It will be approved. It'll be easy for you to get on Free Talk Live via Skype from that point forward. If you want to get some Bitcoins, the place to do it is CashIntheCoins.com. Now, CashIntheCoins.com I know is going to be making some big announcements here in the near future, but they're still easy, safe, fast, legal, inexpensive. And I say it every time because I mean it. Customer service is their top priority at CashIntheCoins.com. I've done a lot of business with uh, CashIntheCoins.com, and I have always been pleased with the uh, outcomes. They've got great rates. You can actually donate some of your fee to, to uh, charity, and as always, or, orders under $40 carry no fee. It's cashintocoins.com to get Bitcoins. You've been hearing about them. This is the a, way to do it, cashintocoins.com. I bought $100 worth of Bitcoin from cashintocoins.com. Started the process yesterday. Okay. Uh huh. Went to the bank, got a cashier's check. You take a picture of the check and a picture of your ID and email that to Cash into Coins. Then you mail... The check. The check. And a copy of your ID to cash into coins. And I'm not sure when along the, the process there you get the bitcoins. It hasn't happened yet. I haven't put that check in the mail, but well, the cashier's check is uh you know, it's good stuff. I mean, you know, you're you're safe with a cashier's check as long as the bounce. business goes. Yeah. So um, I would imagine it's just as soon as they receive it, you're probably gonna get your Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh cash into coins is a good option for me now because I'm not sure if some of my local sources are willing to sell bitcoins at these low, low prices. Yeah, I think that's uh, what a lot of people are feeling. And you've got to do business in bitcoins if you want Bitcoin to continue to go up. It has to be used as a currency. That's what it is. If it doesn't have a utility as what it is, then it's not going to go up in value. Cashinacoins.com. All right. Uh, we'll continue, of course, with your calls and thoughts on the way here. Johnny Ray is going to tell us about the CDC director who hates e-cigarettes. We'll get into that story. Plus, millennials have historically low levels of trust in government. Let's go first to Adam. He's in Baltimore. You're on Free Talk Live. Adam. Hey, guys. Hey. I just want to um, just scream at my TV and my radio because they've been talking nothing about uh, talking about nothing but the NBA owner. Um, yes. Who, you know, the, the racist owner. But you know what? Okay, he's a racist guy. Okay, but why? Why does it need to be like wall-to-wall coverage? Like, why? I'm I'm still waiting for the mainstream media to start talking about drone strikes that are killing innocent people every day. We're not every day, but you know what I mean. Yeah, it's going like, on all the time, no doubt about it. Um, actually, there was a, a really interesting response by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on this one. I thought he really uh, sort of, you know. Did the, the old sky hook on it. Um, he did a great job and really summed it up as far as I was concerned. Here's a quote from it. So if we're all going to be outraged, the former NBA star wrapped up, let's be outraged that we aren't more outraged when his racism was first evident. Because this guy had charges of not letting people get um, housing based on completely on their race, saying things like uh, black people smelled and attract vermin. Um, oh, my gosh. And so this was... This is years ago. Well, not years and years, but years ago. Um, not a surprise here. Let's be outraged that a private conversation between people in an intimate relationship is recorded and publicly played. Let's be outraged that whoever did the betraying will probably get a book deal, a sitcom, trade um, trade recipes with Hoda and uh, Kathy Lee. I'm not sure who these people are. Kathy Lee Gifford, I think, as I've heard Presumably. of this person. I don't know who these people are. Soon. Soon appear on The Celebrity Apprentice and Dancing with the Stars. 
So, so this guy had his conversations recorded secretly. Yeah, yeah. As, as, as I understand it, um, there's another quote from here. Essentially, the uh, the girlfriend or ex girlfriend decided that she was going to turn on him mm-hmm. or something, and sort of led him down the primrose path. I can't say I feel bad for the guy. Sounds like a real jerk. He's, Indeed, he's very old fashioned. My question yep. is this, though: is uh, I mean, he got a he got a two point five million dollar fine uh, from, from the NBA from the NBA, okay. and he's he, banned from the NBA. He's banned from going to an NBA event or anything to do with the NBA for life. And it just it all seems like what Kareem Abdul Jabbar says here is this is disingenuous. You know, when when the crimes committed against basketball players were all breathless with the with upset. When the crimes committed against ordinary people, and if we're going to call it a crime, ordinary black people you mean? Or yeah, ordinary yeah. black people. I don't think it's a crime necessarily, but um you know, in the 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 rigorous sense of the term, I just think he's a real jerk. Yeah, well, it's not a crime, but it's uh it's a you know, a violation of a hum- someone's humanity I mean, yeah, to uh, to insult them or to look down on them because of the color of their skin. But Adam, you're saying you're sick of the the coverage of this one story that this has been the lead story. I really hadn't heard much about it, but then again, I don't listen to the news, so that's probably why. Um, you're seeing yeah. this everywhere, though. Well, Ian, I don't blame you, man, because like, all right, I'll, I'll just say this: Why is TMZ? leading the conversation of this country. Why do I care about Justin Bieber and his Lamborghini or Ferrari, get, hit him driving drunk and, and drag racing in Miami or wherever it was? Why do I care about that? I care about drone strikes killing innocent people, innocent children in the Middle East that then leads to terrorism in this country. And that actually affects me because I might get blown up when I'm in line at the airport. I don't care about these racist people. They don't affect my life, but when somebody's over in the Middle East under under my name, because you know we, I live in America, you live in America, they're killing people in our name. When people are bombed, they think Americans, American, Americans. I can't even go to, over to Egypt now and look at the Great Pyramids because of these jerks, because of these jerks called the U.S. military, because of these jerks called the U.S. government. I can't travel outside of the country without worrying about being killed because I have, I have an American accent. It disgusts me that TMZ leads the conversation in this country, and they shouldn't be, and that's why this country's so messed up. Well, They're the good news the is uh, you do have choices, and right now RT.com, their front page, I don't see anything about the NBA story. You click on the USA section, and I don't see anything about the NBA story. So there are some places. Al Jazeera does have the NBA story on there. Uh, he does say in this country you are referring to foreign news organizations. RT has an, Amer- a, an American division, as does Al Jazeera. Yeah, I get where you're coming from, but is it? It's like it's like calling Honda an American auto auto manufacturer. It's mm-hmm. probably more accurate uh, than calling uh, Ford an American auto manufacturer, but it just doesn't feel right. CNN, Fox, MSNBC, um, these are the American um, news organizations. No, I, I totally get the frustration, and uh, what can you really do about it? You can go out there, you can make your own news, you can uh, do your own independent reporting, you can you know, f- focus on independent news sources that you find are more trustworthy or they're more worth your while, and I'm sure that you can find those that originate from here in the United States. I don't know, you know, uh, I'm not going to go out on a limb and say which ones would or would not cover this NBA story, but maybe some of them would give it less coverage uh, or coverage that would be more appropriate to to your tastes, but ultimately yeah. we're going to have to become the media if we want to correct this problem because uh, the, the sort of, sort of these Hollywood esque news I don't know if you can call, even call it news entertainment news whatever you want to yeah, call entertainment it entertainment news this stuff sort of uh, rules the roost around here in the United States. Yeah, Ian, I mean, look at hey, I mean, I'm on the show right now that should be the mainstream because of the way you guys give coverage. I don't, I don't mind the fact that they're covering the story. It's just the amount, like you said, it's the amount of coverage. Mm-hmm. It's the wall to wall. It's just like uh, back when Rush Limbaugh was said something about some girl being a slut. Like, why was that the lead conversation? Like, that doesn't affect me in, in a major way. You know what I mean? Like, it's just there's so much other news that. There should be, you know, if they're going to cover something in a major way, it should be something that will affect me. And they're ignoring it or they're pushing it to the side on page 16. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you guys, you guys should be the, like, free, free Talk Live, RT, 
that that really needs to become well, Free Talk Live is not a news show in any way, shape, or form. Thank you for the call tonight, Adam. I appreciate hearing from you. But if we were the mainstream, then that would shif- show a major shift in people's values and what it is that they find useful and interesting, right? It would be a lot harder to get on the air and talk, too. The reason why it gets uh, stories like this get the coverage they get is because people watch. You know? Is the news setting the agenda, or are they just giving people what they want? It's Free Talk Live. Angioprim can unclog blocked arteries and improve blood flow in all parts of your body. Angioprim is oral chelation. Easy, simple, liquid oral chelation. You take it with juice before breakfast and forget about it. Angioprim works fast, unlike old-fashioned chelation that takes hours. Just log on to angioprim.com. That's angioprim, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, angioprim.com. Angioprim users say they have more energy, more strength, more endurance. Increased circulation and blood flow will make all your body parts work better. Log on to angioprim.com. Angioprim.com to get more information on how you can get started and start feeling better, having fun, and doing more again. Lots more. Talk to a trained Angioprim consultant. Call Angioprim toll-free at 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. Or log on for complete information. Angioprim.com. That's Angioprim.com. Find out how Angioprim can work for you. Get the facts about Angioprim at Angioprim.com. You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Badabi. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm.
Free Talk Live, here to take your calls about whatever you want to discuss. You just dial in toll-free and take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up, Johnny Ray will share with us the CDC director's opinion about e-cigarettes. It's not very good, apparently. We'll get to that. Your calls welcome, 855-450-FREE. Maybe you've been thinking about getting uh, accepting Bitcoin at your business. Well, blockchain.com has your merchant solution because there haven't been too many options up until this point for merchant solutions. Now, you could just go and you know install your regular blockchain wallet and accept payments that way, but the problem with that is if you use the regular blockchain app, which I have on my phone, uh, you can send Bitcoins from that account too. If you're a merchant, you want to just be able to receive the Bitcoins. You don't want your employees... To have access to your bank account. You sure don't. Uh, you know, maybe you trust your employees, but the fact is, eventually, you're going to probably find an employee who isn't so trustworthy. And in that case, it's probably a good thing to not give them access to being able to send money from your account. And essentially, with a Bitcoin wallet, that's your bank. That's the equivalent of your bank account. It's, it's you taking care of your own bank account. You're in charge of your own security, basically. And uh, so blockchain can help you protect your account by the use of this brand new product that they're offering at blockchain.com. Normally we talk about blockchain.info. That's kind of their everybody site. Blockchain.com is their site for merchants. People like you who might be, you know, operating a point of sale, you know, a, a, a retail location where you want to be able to accept Bitcoin from your customers. The new blockchain merchant app allows you to do that and it allows you to do it with no terms of service. You can do it. You can accept uh, Bitcoin safely, securely, and for free. There's no fee involved with accepting Bitcoin through Blockchain.com's merchant app. So go and check it out. It's brand new, and it's at Blockchain.com. We continue with your calls and thoughts. Eight fifty five four fifty free. Then coming up, uh, Johnny Ray will tell us about an opinion of a bureaucrat, a, I guess influential bureaucrat, about sure. the e-cigarette menace. First, Tom is in New Hampshire. You're on Free Talk Live, Tom. Uh, yeah, it's about uh, Donald Sterling. You know, he makes a private racist comment. Uh, to Who is this? Is this the NBA of... guy? Yes. Yeah, okay. the, the uh, Los Angeles Clippers guy who, in private, makes a racist comment. And next thing he knows, it's being splattered all over the news, and he's banned from uh, going to uh, NBA games. Well, I mean, he can't even buy tickets and go to the game from what uh, it says. Good. For the rest of his life. Good. Even though I mean, look, if you're going to be a racist, it should have consequences, and this is social ostracism. The NBA doesn't have an obligation to uh, do business with this man. They don't have an obligation to allow him to come attend their uh, their games. It doesn't matter that he's an owner. He uh, he shouldn't be a, a racist, and now he's, he's experiencing some uh, consequence for that. And uh, so what they need to do is put up signs at the beer stand saying, you must be 21 to buy beer, but don't blame us. It's the state that makes us do this. And anybody who makes any comment that says they, they like that law, they don't think the drinking age should be lowered, they're making a hate speech, too. And so they should be banned for life from ever attending any uh, NBA games because uh, they're bigots who hate everybody under 21. Well, maybe you should try to get on the NBA's board and see if you can make that change. Thanks, Tom, for the call tonight. Uh, 855-450-FREE. I, I'm not upset about what's happening to this guy at all. I mean, I've, I barely heard anything about the news except for what I've heard so far on the show here tonight. But I think it's entirely appropriate for people to socially ostracize somebody for having a viewpoint, even if they've kept it, tried to keep it private. If you are a private racist and you've managed to tell enough people privately, eventually that info is going to come out and you deserve to have some sort of consequence. I don't think he should have to pay anything to the um, NBA. If he's he's, a, he's if under he's agreement. In, he, he's a, oh, now he's under owner. agreement, and he's not allowed to go to a Is game. Is he not an owner of the, of That's the correct. franchise? Well, if he's an owner of their franchise, he's under their franchise terms uh, agreement, and that that means he's subject to whatever rules and punishments they have in that agreement. I, I guess. I, you I don't are know. To, like It's likely some sort of morals clause or whatever. You are to be of it uh, all good character. Sounds, it just all sounds so breathless to me. These um, organizations, many of them um, organizations that help you know young black people in Los Angeles have accepted all kinds of this dude's money. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, the NAACP local chapter in Los Angeles has uh, named him like the the guy of the year or something like that. They were like going that. to give him a Lifetime Achievement Award. His second Johnny Ray. Okay. <laughs> you know you know how you get a Lifetime Achievement Award from the NAACP in Los Angeles? No. You give them a f- buttload of money. That's how you do it. So I don't know. You know, I mean, I heard little clips of what this guy said. It was reprehensible stuff. But it just seems like everybody pushed it under the rug and pushed it under the rug because they were all getting payoffs. And I want everybody to give it back. Everybody who's running their yacker about this guy, specifically the NBA, not these young young kids. I mean, obviously, I, I you know, I have any problem with them. But the NBA and all their, oh, you know, their breathlessness about it. You know what? Write a check back. You knew what was up from a the get-go. To, to this guy. What does give he your, need money back Give for? your money back to the bigot because you're stupid. Stinking, uh, two-faced, a bunch of two-faced people. They knew what was up with this guy for years. You're saying the NBA heads, the brass there, knew that this guy was a racist, and now that it's come out, they're acting like they didn't Ian, know? Ian, there was a court case... A couple, a few years ago, where he was uh, being charged with uh, discrimination, housing discrimination, okay. where he said that black people stink and they draw vermin. Okay, yeah. I mean, you don't have to. There's not much more racist than that. Okay, but people didn't do anything and they didn't say anything, and it wasn't worth. Now that some NBA stars, because this was about um, this uh, his his girlfriend or whatever taking pictures with black people or something. I'm not okay. exactly sure. Um, with uh, Magic, Magic Johnson, Johnson, Magic Johnson, and mm. and that kind of thing, right? So it was about because we have now gone after wealthy basketball players. This is racism. So you're saying you believe that the NBA knew about his comments before and deliberately ignored them? Or is it possible they didn't know about those comments? I suppose it's possible. Is it possible no one brought it to their attention until recently? It's not very convenient for them to have known either. That's why I suspect them. Uh huh. Okay, well. I'm with Kareem Abdul Jabbar on this one. This is a bunch of bad people pointing their finger at a bad guy, trying to make themselves look good. That may be true. I mean, the guys behind the NBA may be a bunch of scumbags, too. I don't know. I'm just saying, I don't feel sorry for this dude. I mean, he should have not been a racist. and Or if he was a racist, should have kept it to his damn self. Well, what about a lifetime ban? I mean, shouldn't he be able to apologize and be able to go back to games or something? Sure. Maybe he should try that. It's it's, it's certainly something to try. All right. Toll-free number 855-450-FREE. Johnny Ray with a story about the CDC director and his thoughts on e-cigarettes, which are, by the way, under attack. Uh, Word is the FDA is going to be regulating them soon. That's what I heard. CDC director explains what he hates about electronic cigarettes. Karen Kaplan, April 29th, 2014. I would like to know, what is there to hate about electronic cigarettes? I think they're an amazing invention that has helped people quit smoking. Yeah. And I think they, nicotine has been shown by the state of California to cause cancer. Indeed. So, so does another like 300 carcinogenic things in uh, cigarettes. So if you eliminate 299 of those things, um, you know, okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I agree. Uh, they seem like they're much safer than smoking a regular cigarette. Sure. And I think there's a lot of things that um, that you can do with them if you're maybe trying to quit smoking or turn smoking into something that's a little less damaging but um the director of the cdc does not agree of all the threats to americans health a list that includes bird flu measles and west nile virus few get dr tom frieden as riled up as electronic cigarettes as director of the centers for disease control and prevention frieden has a ready-made platform for spreading his views about the dangers of vaping during a visit to the los angeles times on monday we asked him why he's so passionate about e-cigarettes. I've treated so many adults who are desperate, desperate to get off tobacco. They all started as kids, Frieden said. I see the industry getting another generation of our kids addicted. To me as a physician, when 1.78 million of our high school kids have tried an e-cigarette, and a lot of them are using them regularly, that's like watching someone harm hundreds of thousands of children. In addition, he said, people have a misconception that the tobacco epidemic is a thing of the past. Tobacco still kills more Americans than any other cause. It still kills more than 1,000 people a day. As a doctor, I can tell you it kills them in really unpleasant ways. Gasping for breath with emphysema, with cancer, with heart disease. 
What does that have to do with e-cigarettes? Well, indeed, I think that he's... Um, so I, E-cigarettes aren't tobacco, number one. Right. There's well, no tobacco involved. It, that's a, it's a little frustrating. So, okay, so what he's doing here is he's saying that, look, kids are uh, vaping. I have no evidence of this. I've never seen it happen in my lifetime. I have I'm never seen... I'm sure it's true. It's got to be. Somebody has, right? And he says at one point something million. E-cigarettes I, are cool, and they're tasty, and there's no, there's no reason why a teenager or anybody wouldn't like an e-cigarette. By the way, some of them don't have any uh, nicotine in them at all, so you can vape without having the nicotine. It's true. We'll come back with more on this and his thoughts here in moments. Hour number three is on the way. 855-450 free. Free talk live. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 the three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. You're listening to the Liberty Beat, your daily source for liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. This is Justin Armand with your Liberty Beat for April 29th, 2013. Gold opened today at $1,296, silver at $19.44, and Bitcoin is trading at $448. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promotional code FREEDOM, June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours today at voiceandexit.com. And from Dorothy Erminger at Capstar Lending. For all your residential mortgage needs, call Dorothy at 512-343-6494 or apply online at calldorothy.com, NMLS number 216624. And from My Magic Mud, an all-natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. The United States Department of Justice is attempting to convince the Supreme Court that police should be allowed to search suspects' cell phones immediately upon arrest without a warrant. The Center for Democracy and Technology and the Electronic Frontier Foundation argue that warrantless searches of cell phones are a serious violation of privacy and constitutional protections. After a three-year struggle, efforts to overturn the controversial indefinite detention clause included in the National Defense Authorization Act of 2012 have failed. On Monday, the Supreme Court decided against hearing a challenge to sections of the NDAA that allow for indefinite detention of suspected terrorists, stating that the law does not mention detaining United States citizens. The case was brought forth by journalists, scholars, and activists concerned that they could be detained and held without trial. A federal judge had previously found the law unconstitutionally overboard. That decision was later overturned by the Second U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. 
Residents of Dallas, Texas, have been engaged in a battle over water fluoridation for months. It's reported that the city will save around $1 million annually by ending water fluoridation. Three city council members have voiced their support for ending fluoridation, while the Dallas County Dental Society is fighting to continue adding hydrofluorosilicic acid to the Dallas water supply. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Brave New Books, now offering ProPure Water Filtration, the only gravity-driven, all-in-one fluoride removal system that also alkalizes the water as well. Find them in Austin at 1904 Guadalupe Street or online at bravenewbookstore.com. And from Mass Appeal, affordable, high-quality printing, now accepting Bitcoin, online at massappealinc.com. And from Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. You're listening to The Liberty Beat for April 29th, 2014. Be sure to check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. The Liberty Beat team is excited to announce a new production called The Education Freedom Report, your source for school news, parenting tips, and education spotlights, which will be airing soon. We'd like to share a clip with you from the new show. In today's world of specialized schooling, where all students are expected to learn the same subject at the same time in the same way, it's difficult to give our children an optimal learning environment. Fortunately, there are several internet-based resources that are filling that need. Startup Learning was created by educational specialist Michael Strong, along with his team of highly skilled experts. Michael offers one-on-one -on -one consultations for parents who are interested in maximizing their child's learning experience. Startup Learning has a multitude of alternatives to the one-size-fits-all public school model. It doesn't matter if your child is attending public or private school, or is homeschooled or unschooled. Startup Learning offers guidance for parents who are looking to give their child the skills and education needed to thrive in the 21st century. For more information, visit StartupLearning.me. I hope you enjoyed that little teaser from our very own Jessica Armand. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the Antminer S1 180 Gigahash Bitcoin Miner. No pre-order, ships on time, and sometimes it's early. Buy yours today at bitmaintech.com. And from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication along with posters and promotional materials. Online at affordablesound.com or give them a call at 512-459-5253. You've been listening to the Liberty Beat. Remember... Freeing your mind is freeing our world. Frustrated Superman fans told reporters Monday that the economically healthy and financially stable Daily Planet newspaper is now the most unrealistic aspect of the comic book's universe. Acknowledging that enjoying the adventures of a superhero that can fly, lift cars over his head, and shoot beams of light out of his eyes requires some suspension of disbelief, longtime readers said even the comic's most exciting stories are regularly ruined by the implausibility of a thriving daily newspaper whose advertising revenue and circulation numbers have not at all been threatened by a media landscape overtaken by lap laptops, smartphones, and aggregation websites. Look, I can play along with Superman using his breath to freeze a volcano or clapping his hands together to cause some sort of sonic boom, but seeing images of a thriving Daily Planet newsroom not facing layoffs or dwindling home subscriptions just really takes me out of the story. No one in Metropolis has realized they could get news online faster and for free? This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We will take your calls about whatever you want. We're launching into the third hour of the program here. We're live seven nights a week. You can join us every single night at 7 to 10 at night Eastern time. That's our live time. So if you're listening to us at a different time, wherever you are, you can always call during our live show and talk to us about whatever you want. Then you can listen to yourself later on. We're on over 140-some radio stations coast to coast, and hopefully we'll be adding a few more here soon. Uh, you can join us on the phones, 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype as well. Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. To continue, Johnny Ray, uh, you were sharing with us a story in the last hour for our listeners just tuning in. The director of the CDC, Centers for Disease Control, he says e-cigarettes are evil. And what else does he have to say? 
E-cigarettes are a tobacco product, he which says. Which is ridiculous. Which is, which is 100% contradicted by Ian Freeman. <laughs> Actually... The story goes on to say the battery-operated devices do not burn tobacco. Instead, as my colleague Monty Morin reported, they heat nicotine, propylene glycol, and glycerin into a vapor, which is inhaled by the user. And so, Ian, are you telling me that the tobacco, the nicotine that they get, is not derived from? I don't know about that. Maybe they are somehow. Is Marinol a marijuana product? Um, you know, once you've extracted something, is uh, you know, is aspirin a birch bark product? Um, mm-hmm. I just, I, you know, I don't know that. Uh, you know, I, 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 it depends on how you talk about it. I think that calling an e-cigarette a tobacco product is could be intended to be speaking the truth, but at the same time, it could be intended to sort of smear the truth. This, it doesn't have all the consequences. I'm sorry. At this point, science hasn't proven that it has the consequences of cigarettes because it, you're not burning, you're not combusting tobacco. You're combusting some glycol, um, you know, vaporizing some, some glycol. You don't necessarily even have to have nicotine in it. So the, uh, the claim that young people are using e-cigarettes may not be, um, it may not be true that they are in fact using nicotine, that every one of them is using nicotine. As a matter of fact, I would venture to say that some of them are not. I know I have used an e-cigarette that did not have nicotine in it. So, uh, you know, I'm not a chemist, so I don't know for sure about any of this stuff, but I just did go and look at nicotine on Wikipedia, and there is some information here about synthesizing it, so maybe it's possible to get it in other ways besides I don't know why you would um, when you can get it most efficiently through tobacco, uh, but I, I know that there's nicotine in tomatoes. Thank you, Dr. Edge. Really? Really? Uh, yes, that's something I... Nicotine in tomatoes. I'll there's, look that up for you. There's nicotine in tobacco. There's not nicotine in tomatoes, tomato? What is though. a tomato? It's a genetically modified uh, crop that is a combination of nicotine and tomatoes. And you tomaco. eat them. Yeah, tomato. You eat the tomato, and it satisfies your nicotine addiction. For Are real? You, you're not familiar with this? No, that sounds amazing. Never heard of it. It is. It's an amazing Have you tried technology. One before? No, I've only seen them on TV. Twenty pounds of eggplant is equivalent to one cigarette. There, um, here according to HuffingtonPost dot com. Oh, so there are vegetables that uh, you know seem that seem to have. Uh, I don't know if eggplant's a vegetable or fruit, but um, that have nicotine in it. Tomacco is something from The Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> it's not real. Ye- no, you're right. It's not real. That's probably where. What, uh, what, you, there's nicotine in eggplant, Mark. Is that what you said? The eggplant and tomatoes and potatoes. All right. Nightshades. Still, Frieden rattled off five reasons why e-cigarettes are as dangerous, as dangerous as tobacco cigarettes. He's just trying to help the children. If they get another generation of kids more hooked on nicotine and more likely to smoke cigarettes, that's more why harm than good, true? he said. That's the big scare. Now, I know that's one of five reasons, but uh, just to stop on the first one, yeah. why would that be true? All the evidence is that the e-cigarettes get people out of smoking cigarettes. They right. help people stop smoking cigarettes. Why would someone who starts with an e-cigarette who has this variety of flavor available to them, you want vanilla, you want mint, you want you know cherry, whatever, you, uh, why would they want to go down to fewer choices, more difficult uh, usage? You know, it's, it's more difficult to inhale smoke than it is to inhale, inhale vapor. It doesn't make sense to me. When I was uh, younger, I used to uh, smoke when I'd go out to bars. I'd get the Marlboro Ultralights. I wanted the lightest nicotine I could get because I wanted the experience of smoking while you know, drinking a beer or having a drink or whatever, because I like that sort of feeling of uh, the inhaling, the, what they call the throat hit. When you say you were younger, you were in prison for nine years. So okay. What of time so when I was uh, from 28 to okay, 32. So after prison. I didn't uh, know if you were going into bars at age 17 or whatever. No. Okay. Um, I certainly smoked when I was 17, but yeah. I basically did it because other friends, uh, you know, gave me the opportunity to smoke. I so you went into bars for It's what? impossible to get a throat hit from a Marlboro Ultralight, Mark. Fine. I, you're as a real smoker. I get wh- what you're saying. However, I had the experience of inhaling something different than air when I was uh, smoking a Marlboro Ultralight. And... Uh, you know, with these e-cigarettes, I a couple of years ago, I had the opportunity to get one and have one, and I, I'd go out every once in a while if I went to, out to a bar, and I would uh, smoke the e-cigarette. And this was, you know, for me, 
a great experience because it had no nicotine in it, and it just had the glycol, and I would sort of get the experience of smoking while drinking and still be able to be I indoors. I thought you were using ultralights. Um, I was having the – when I could get them, I had the ones that had no nicotine. Zeros? And huh. when I had couldn't, I would get the ones that had the least amount okay. of nicotine because a little bit of nicotine it really isn't a problem. I never felt like this, oh, I want to smoke again thing because mm-hmm. it's different than a vape. cigarette. You mean I want to vape again? Or even vape again yeah. or whatever. I just didn't have that experience because it – no, but I – it never made me want to smoke again. As a former smoker, yeah. I didn't have that, oh, I want to smoke again you had, feeling. So to clarify, you had quit smoking. You then started with an e-cigarette. Yes. And you did not – it did not reinitiate your desire to smoke is that's, what you're saying. That's correct because the experience of it is different. You don't get that sort of hit of nicotine all at once. You It, it sort of assimilates more slowly um, mm. through the e-cigarette. So I – Basically, the nicotine would give me, um, you know, a low, a low, low headache. I'd stop, and it would just sort of that feeling would go away, and I wasn't interested anymore. Yeah, I don't think that uh, that that e-cigarettes. I don't have. I think I have less experience than than even you, Mark. But you smoke cigarettes. I have before. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I thought you did smoke. Okay. Um, you currently are not a cigarette smoker. No. Okay. No. You're dipped though, right? Correct. Yeah. That's okay. right. So the uh, smoking those cigarettes, though it it's a real it's a powerful experience to take a hit of 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 regular cigarette smoke, and I equate that to the to the to the gin and that was sold during prohibition. That it's just harder and it's a more powerful hit and it's going to get you more addicted than an e-cigarette will. E-cigarettes seem milder to me. Mm-hmm. That you're you can smoke them on airplanes. No, you can't. Not anymore. Not anymore. Oh, okay. You well, could probably get away with smoking one if you were cautious uh, or vaping. I keep using the term Meaning smoking. you would suck it in, hold it until the vapor just dissipated completely, and then sort of blew it out. Yeah, and I don't know if you, like, you know how you go into an air, uh, airplane bathroom and they've got the special smoke detectors in there? I don't know if those will detect vapor. I don't expect that they would. I could be wrong about that, and I wouldn't want to be the, the test case to, to try to find that out. Yeah, I'm not interested but, in that. Well, you, you could do what Mark's saying, is you could conceal a vaporizer in your you know your backpack or something like that, and then take a take a toke off of it while no one's looking or whatever. Try to secret, secret a toke while you're in your seat, but odds are good you'll have better luck if you're sitting in the bathroom. I think you'd be better off with nicotine gum in that circumstance, yeah. because it's going to provide you with the nicotine while you know, you're in the, Being more subtle, in the air. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this isn't one of those instances where you're going to vaporize for the pleasure of vaporizing. It's going to be one of those because I have to have some You're nicotine. an addict. Right. Yeah. And uh, the best bet at that point is the nic- nicotine gum. Just put, pop it in your mouth, take a bite, er, hold it, and let the uh, nicotine mm-hmm. sort of soothe you and then, you know, <laughs> do your thing. I think the argument here is that... E-cigarettes are are a milder smoking experience. You can have them be flavored. So because of that, because regular cigarettes are harsher than an e-cigarette, that will make these e-cigarettes more palatable for new smokers, and you're going to recruit more youngsters than otherwise would be recruited because of the gentle nature of the e-cigarette. Because it doesn't have the same stigma attached to it as a cigarette? Yeah, but I'm not buying it. Addiction is... Well, I could see that maybe being the case in certain cases, but I don't see it being very likely that the people who start, the teenagers who start using e-cigarettes will downgrade, essentially, to cigarettes. Why would they do that? Maybe some would, but it doesn't make sense. More on the way. Free talk live. Hold on, hold on. We've got to interrupt the regularly scheduled stuff for just a minute. I've got to tell you about this because it's weird. It'll make sense. What if I told you that eating this one weird spice could actually help you reverse diabetes? I know, it's crazy, right? Well, if you or somebody you care about has diabetes or prediabetes or metabolic, met, bleh, easy for me to say, metabolic syndrome, you've got to check out this video. It's free. You may have heard about this. People who've tried it, say that they've been able to normalize their blood sugar, stop taking their diabetes meds, and their doctors are all for it. So what is it? What's behind this? Well, the company says it's a natural drug-free approach to reversing diabetes, and they say that it works in as little as four weeks, and it all starts with this one weird kitchen spice you probably have in your kitchen right now. So you should check out the free video and see for yourself. It's at weirdspice55.com. So write that down. It's weirdspice55.com. 
WeirdSpies55.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm. This time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237, and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. Just dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Or Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. We'll continue with more of the critique of e-cigarettes from the director of the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control. We'll continue with that in a moment. Also going to your phones, uh, your phone calls here in a moment as well. First, I want to tell you about freedomsphoenix.com. If you've been to freetalklive.com, you know that our website works in a way that you can actually create the content you submit uh, news stories or whatever it is that you find on the internet other listeners can vote them up or down depending on how they feel about it at freedomsphoenix.com you also get great liberty oriented news but it's more curated in a uh, in an editorial fashion they've got an editor there who selects from various different submissions and decides what to put there at freedomsphoenix.com there's always a huge uh, bunch of news on a variety of different topics they cover the lies that lie uh, between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. They offer up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go now to freedomsphoenix.com and sign up for their free daily dispatch. That's freedomsphoenix.com. Crichton is on the line in Kentucky. Crichton, what's on your mind tonight on Free Talk Live? Well, I had a, a kind of weird experience earlier today, and I wanted to talk about it. Um, I am 
I don't know if you, I know you guys don't exactly agree with this position. You know, the, you take the position that citizenship is a a a social contract that for which there is an actual performance. Basically, that uh, a citizen is someone who is promised safety, protection, in exchange for loyalty. That's correct. That's what a citizen is defined um, as. And I believe that that once upon a time that 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 was more true than it, it is now. And I was hit with a perfect example. Um, in 1908, a book was published by Lord Baden Powell. It was called Scouting for Boys: A Handbook for Instruction in Good Citizenship. It was the very book that started the worldwide Cub Scout, Boy Scout movement, including the United States. Um, and this particular individual was a lieutenant general in India prior to uh, writing this book. And he wrote this book on the belief that his own philosophy was that that was the per- that was the uh, the agreement that citizens should expect a some level of protection for their loyalty mm-hmm. and that the same citizens should participate in that in that same protection of their own society he was very proud of being english and he very much understood why americans were very proud of being americans and australians are very proud of being australians and so forth and he wrote this book and it became a movement of its own right it, it obviously we know historically it became very very huge, and um, I, I was reading the book, that particular book last night. And the book's called um, what? I'm sorry, I missed that. Searching for scouting for boys. Scouting for boys. For okay, sounds creepy. A, a handbook for instruction <laughs> in good citizenship. Yep. And I was reading it specifically because I was considering giving it to my own son. Um, because I agree with his old-fashioned position that even though that's not really true intellectually, we know that that's not completely true. That's that's a good goal to the the, the, the old-fashioned chivalry and uh, self-reliance and these kinds of things are good principles to base a a, a man's life on, uh, better than some other choices. Well, I was reading the preface to this book last night written by this actual individual uh, Robert Baden Powell and he was very open about his Christian beliefs and his uh, preference for chivalry and etc and I was thinking to myself that in this was published in 1908 and in 2020 uh, 2014, this man wouldn't have been a lord knighted by his country. He would have been in jail. And today I was struck by the news article that, that confirmed that for me. A, um, a candidate in Britain for the Australian Parliament, I mean for the uh, European Parliament, was arrested for uh, suspicion of racial racial harassment, because he quoted Winston Churchill in a speech, and it just struck me how far his own society, the society society that produced this individual, has so very much believed in the kind of self reliance that started the the Boy Scout movement, has come so far from this one individual's perspective. So what would get would have the what, what would get someone arrested for uh, advocating the self reliance that comes in uh, the manual? That now, what did the, he do that was uh, arrestable offense these days? Um, he was very open about his position on Christianity as being a superior uh, cultural perspective. No, Not he wouldn't be arrested. Religion. He'd be a Republican. Right. What? What? You uh, said he would go. He would be in jail in today. This, Why is that? In this country. He would be in jail in Britain. Why? Oh, and okay. The example I have is that Paul Weston is a candidate for the European Parliament from Britain today. And today, 
He was arrested on the charge with suspicion of a racial harassment because he quoted Winston Churchill in a public speech. So what was the what was the qu- what was the Churchill qu- uh, quote here? I mean, Churchill's got some some doozies there, not to mention uh, uh, sodomy and the lash. Um, yeah, he, uh, Churchill isn't exactly the best example to quote, but the, the particular passage he was quoting, he's quoting a book that Winston Churchill wrote called The River War, and, in which the, he was, it was an autobiography kind of for Winston Churchill. He was writing about his experiences during the River War uh, in the Middle East, and he was, he was, in the book, he was sharing his perspective on the culture that, that was, Muslims in his day, and because he quoted him precisely in a speech, someone was offended and called the police, and so this candidate was arrested immediately after the the speech. Hmm. And you're saying you believe that the founder of the Boy Scouts would have been in similar trouble? For what reason? For For having the position that his... Anglo Christian culture was superior oh. and should be and should be emulated. That was actually gotcha. in the preface of the book. Hmm. Well, I and, certainly don't agree that his culture is superior over anybody else's, but I also don't think he should go to jail for that. I don't think we would know whether a culture is superior over another unless they're allowed to uh, to flourish and compete. Well, and everybody has different values, though, too. So just because you know some cultures are more technically advanced doesn't mean that a culture that has an appreciation for nature is less Ultimately, valuable. they're scarce resources, and one's going to win out over another. Hey, thanks, Crichton, for the call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. Things certainly have changed over time. 855-450 free. That's 855-450-3733. We'll continue more on e-cigarettes plus Johnny Ray's Game of the Week coming up. Do you owe the IRS money that you can't pay? Are tax liens and levies ruining your life? Are you tired of being afraid just to go to the mailbox? If this describes you, then Dan Pilla can help. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla, and I've been solving tax problems for more than 30 years. In fact, I wrote the book that made it possible to negotiate settlements with the IRS, and I've helped thousands of people do exactly that. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. New changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever before eliminate their debts once and for all. There's no need for you to suffer another day with IRS debt. Call 800-346-6829. I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American Empire? The Empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. I just heard the best sales pitch I've heard in a long time on an airplane. The flight attendant announced, if you paid more than $75 for your round trip ticket, you overpaid. This is brilliant because everybody on the flight paid more. And I was struck by how all the road warriors stopped typing and reading and working and looked up. The announcement invited us to apply for the airline's credit card. And the sign-up bonus? Enough frequent flyer miles for a free round trip. Talk about turning lemons into lemonade. With some banks offering free credit cards, $75 is an outrage for an annual fee, but a bargain for airline tickets. For more tips on communicating more effectively, hit survivalspeech.com, where you can see how I got the CEO of another major airline to shower me with freebies. I'm Holland Cook. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You may bring up anything that you want. We've been talking about e-cigarettes, uh, the founder of the Boy Scouts. I mean, we're just all over the place because you can bring up anything toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Still to come, Johnny Ray's Game of the Week. And you can also join us on Skype via username lrn.fm. You can also join us in real life for an entire week of broadcasting and fun in the woods. The Porcupine Freedom Festival coming up. June 22nd through the 29th. We are less than two months away from this amazing event in the beautiful White Mountains of New Hampshire. Uh, it's a place called Rogers Campground. It's where it's been held for the last several years. And there were last year over 1,500 people attending at the Porcupine Freedom Festival over the entire week. It's an absolute blast to be around people who actually get it when it comes to the ideas of freedom. This is a, a bit of a taste of what things could be like in the future if you make the move to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project. You can be around a group of liberty-minded people pretty much as much as you want. You can live with other people who love the ideas of freedom, as many of us do here in New Hampshire, who have moved as part of the Free State Project. So the Porcupine Freedom Festival is a way for you to experience the, the level of community that we have here around uh, all around the year. The reason why the three of us are in the studio together tonight is because of the Free State Project. This is their premier yearly summertime camping event. You don't want to miss it. If you're not into camping, you can probably maybe find a hotel room still, but you might have to be a ways away from the campgrounds. It's my understanding that most of the hotels are close to selling out uh, at this point. But tickets are still available for the Porcupine Freedom Festival. We will see you there. We're broadcasting live every night. Again, June 22nd through the 29th. Go to porkfest.com to learn more and get booked. That's porkfest, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. We go to the phones here. Lot is on the line in Indiana listening to WIMS. Hello, Lot. Hello, hello, namaste. Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Um, well, I'm a first-time listener, Welcome. and I see the name of the show is, well, thank you. Um, the name of the show is Free Talk, and I'm a free thinker. And I was wondering on your guys' the possibility, and, you know, seeing if this was possible, but having to where we take the separation that we have of ourselves, such as Americans, Mexicans, Africans, whatever the label is, take that label away. We all recognize that we are all one. And from there, we all have food, shelter, clothing, free energy, I mean, free sustaining energy, uh, a sense of income, if you will, for the things in which we will give back to society, because I think that in this realm, we'll be able to change the educational system, which will then make people grow into a sense of where they will be able to want to 
give back to the community. So the more they give, the more, I guess, and essentially you will be able to obtain, but you won't have to own anything because there's no reason for ownership. Okay, so I like the first part of what you said, where we can break down the barriers, these false uh, barriers that divide people into groups that are completely unnecessary, like nation states, for instance, or race, the idea that we're anything different than just, you know, we're just human beings. That's all. I think that's really important. I like that idea. And I like the idea that everybody's uh, one and that we're all part of this giant organism known as the universe. Uh, and we're all inherently connected together, you know, sort of at a quantum level. I'm I'm into that stuff. I like that. But free energy, it's going to take some time to get to to free energy. That's going to require some scientific and technological advancements. I think that, you know, maybe well, we well, could get to that the point. The free someday. market's going to provide this. At some point we're going to have 3D printers that can create uh, solar power panels for everybody. You'll have less of the lack and want that currently exists today. Mm -hmm. uh, people will be able to buy more with less. But um, oftentimes, uh, what we're talking about to get to, oftentimes when I hear people talking like this, they're talking about a forced redistribution of wealth. They're not talking about the free market actually innovating into this. Yeah, I don't want to see force involved. I like the idea of people getting along, and I like the idea of you know a futuristic society with more leisure time and, uh, and fewer uh, abuses and things like that. And and lot uh so I, I like a lot of those concepts i just don't think force should be involved and i you know i don't know if you heard of the venus project lot no, uh, I haven't. Um, that'll be something that I would like to look into. It sounds it um, sounds like something that it would be up your alley. I don't agree with it at all because the Venus Project is the idea of this uh, group of people who get together and live in these sort of concentrically designed cities that will be uh, overseen by some sort of supercomputer that will determine how all all the, Resource the world's allocation. resources will be allocated to various different places. And it sounds very, very futuristic, and the idea would be that, oh, well, you know, all the, the work in, in life would mostly be done by machines at that point, and so therefore everybody will just be able to make art and music and things like that and just spend their whole day relaxing. And it just sounds like a wonderful vision, but the thing is, I don't agree that, uh, that first of all, that a centralized uh, authority can decide things like that. I like to see decentralization. And secondly, the question really comes down to when you talk to somebody like a Venus Project advocate is, what if I don't want to opt in? What if I'm interested in doing right. my own thing? That's my what question, I... Lot, here, is, is the world is full of a-holes. And my question yeah. is, in your world, and I, I like what you, like, like Ian, I like what you've said, in your world, what do we do with a-holes? Simple. Okay, so in the way that I can perceive it, love ultimately wins. So if we are able to love one another rather than to, you know, hate, <laughs> if we can accept love, and I believe if the circumstances are all changed through the education system, through the the where because right now currently we work we work in a slot where you're just meant to fill in a slot. That's it. It doesn't matter what you want it to. You mean in the education system. You, right. Well, no, no. In, in, in as an uh, occupation. <laughs> in the, yeah, work that we, situation. Well, no, but that no, starts no. in kindergarten. No, that starts in the pre-K um, right. sort of education oh, of system. Lot, you're using a term that really kind of activates me, and that's education system. And I don't know what you yes. mean there when you say education system. This a-hole that okay, I'm talking well, about, let's imagine I'm the a-hole, and I don't want to send okay. my kid to your schools. I don't want to pay okay. for your schools. What do you want to do with okay. me? Well, I'm not... I don't, but I'm not, I'm not going to make you pay for school. Excellent. I don't want you to pay for school because school is something, education is something that ultimately, deep down, each and every one of us, we want, we desire to have, we desire to obtain knowledge. Agreed. So if 100%. we offer knowledge, if we offer knowledge in a way that, because each child ultimately learns a little bit differently. Now we can classify each group as in like whether you're a visual learner, audio learner, hands-on learner. That's great. So you learn from where they want to go, so you alter a set of teaching, basic knowledge and stuff of where they want to go. So say this kid's interested in space. Well, you, get a, you can learn uh, history, you can learn mathematics, you can learn geometry, you can learn you know, just language through whatever subject that interests the individual. Now, the individual is completely in charge. They have the opportunity to choose where they want to go, and where they want to go will ultimately teach them the basics 
and eventually advance them to a point where when they graduate from high school, you're looking at somebody who's got 12 years of experience doing something that they love to do. Now they are ready to contribute to society because it was free, and they have an opportunity to provide for the community. They're going to want to do that. You're going to now. Want I like to now. It sounds like there's some mixed up concepts here, and maybe I just want to try to clarify what what you're saying. Make sure I'm understanding where you're coming from, Lot. I like the idea that a uh, a student can discern their or can decide their own uh, s- curriculum, their own path. They yep. can they can study the things they want to study. They can study them as long or as short of a time as they want to well, study them to the depth, to the level of depth that they want to study them. That makes sense to me. But if you want to study something under an expert. Uh, that expert's probably going to want to get compensated for their time. So if I want to go and I want to learn some sort of you know chemical engineering or whatever, there might be an you know an individual who knows more than me that I would want to tutor underneath, and uh, and that person might be wanting to be compensated because otherwise they could be doing other things. Are you saying that teachers should uh, should be volunteers that they shouldn't get paid? Not at all. What I'm um, I would have to say that the individuals who would be teaching, okay, if this was See, this is all based, you're, you're looking at a concept all based off a monetary system. Now, um, yes, unfortunately, we need a monetary system, but if you get down to the basics and the simples of everything, man made money. So man is... All right, I want to come back with this. This is pretty important stuff here a lot. Hang on, we'll bring it back. I want to get more of his vision for what he thinks things should be like in the future. This is Free Talk Live, and you can take control of the airwaves here in the remaining moments coming up. Angioprim can unclog blocked arteries and improve blood flow in all parts of your body. Angioprim is oral chelation. Easy, simple, liquid oral chelation. You take it with juice before breakfast and forget about it. Angioprim works fast, unlike old-fashioned chelation that takes hours. Just log on to angioprim.com. That's angioprim, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, angioprim.com. Angioprim users say they have more energy, more strength, more endurance. Increased circulation and blood flow will make all your body parts work better. Log on to angioprim.com. Com to get more information on how you can get started and start feeling better, having fun, and doing more again. Lots more. Talk to a trained Angioprim consultant. Call Angioprim toll free at 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. Or log on for complete information. Angioprim.com. That's Angioprim.com. Find out how Angioprim can work for you. Get the facts about Angioprim at Angioprim.com. Gentlemen, in search of a million dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com We love that you're passionate about GCN. And whether you're a listener, a business owner, or a radio industry professional, we've redesigned the new GCN newsletter to keep you in the know. Text GCN Live to 22828 or click on the banner at GCNlive.com. Enter by May 15th. You'll qualify to win a six-month supply of storable food from MyPatriotSupply.com. Start receiving your newsletter today. The future of talk radio. GCN. Free Talk Live. As long as the majority of people say that you can't smoke in public, or the majority of people say you can't have a windmill in your yard, or the majority of people say you can't wear your pants down around your butt, or the majority of people say that you can't contract to live with the person you want to live with, or the majority of the people say that you've got to pay for public schools. As long as the majority says it, it must be okay, because crowds have wisdom. Oh, come on. Nonsense. Crowds lynched people for being witches. There's so many instances in history where we acknowledge now that the majority was massively and horribly wrong. Yes. Sure. Why aren't we acknowledging it? That, look, we have precedent for that. Why aren't we acknowledging it now in terms of how we decide how we're going to interact with each other? That Look, maybe that's not a good way to figure out right and wrong, that the majority believes in a certain thing. And that's, that, that's how we find out right from wrong. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Juicy Juice, 100% juice, providing a full serving of fruit in every four ounces. Visit us at JuicyJuice.com. When it comes to nutrition, kids need both fruits and vegetables every day to stay healthy and grow. For the ideal mix, your kids should have at least one and a half cups of any veggie or 100% veggie juice and one cup of any fruit or 100% fruit juice a day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything in these remaining moments. There's enough time for you with your call and thoughts here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450 Three seven three three. Skype into the show. Username lrn.fm. With you tonight in studio, Ian here, Johnny Ray, and Mark. That's if the we, first time we've done that. You're right. It's uh, that's true. I introduced you guys later or earlier in the show. Uh, we'll get into Johnny Ray's game of the week here in a moment. But we've actually got Lot on the line, and we we'll want to get back to his vision for the future and kind of try to figure out what exactly it is. Um, we'll also want to invite you to our website at freetalklive.com. We do have listening options. You can stream us live through the website. You can also listen to our streams at any time. You'll hear the latest show 24 hours a day at listen.freetalklive.com. We've got over 145 radio stations coast to coast and beyond that carry the show at various times throughout the week. You can hear us on free-to-air satellite as well. Uh, details on that are available at listen.freetalklive.com, plus our webcam, plus listen lines that allow you to call from any phone that can dial long distance and listen to us that way. So there's plenty of ways to get Free Talk Live into your ears. Lot is a first-time listener listening to WIMS in Michigan City, Indiana. And Lot, you're back on Free Talk Live. You've kind of uh, discussed this vision for the future that you have where people's divides are broken down, which I agree with that, at least that much of it, the idea of getting rid of nation states, getting rid of the idea of race, and just looking at people as human beings and, and as our brothers and sisters and that we're all connected. I like uh, that that viewpoint, but things are getting a little bit more difficult to understand, and so that's why I wanted to kind of figure out exactly where you were coming from. You were talking about education should be free, it should be self-directed, that the individual should decide, you know, what their educational path is. I agree with like the idea of unschooling. I like the idea of getting people out of institutions and deciding for themselves these things. But you were just kind of getting into your answer as to, well, if education's free in your mind, how are people going to be compensated? for their time in providing education to the to these people who are seeking it. Well, see, now you talk about the monetary system, and that's something else that has to be reestablished. As of right now, we look at money as being something to possess. It's something that we created as individuals. Now, if you believe in the theory of that we're all as one, some to an extent, could believe in a higher power. Some There's religions out there. There's spiritualities out there. Now, they all claim individually to be one and the same, or to be the ultimate way. Well, if you alter that and you combine everything together, in a sense, because it's not a little bit of everything, but you change the perspective a little bit, and then adding into the having an education system, which is free, you now take a concept of where you... Everybody's doing something that they love to do. Now, you find that there are people out there that are natural teachers. There are people that are natural leaders. There are people that are just it's in their nature. So you're, are you saying are. that people should just give up uh, the idea of money? I'm not real sure what you're saying here. <laughs> well, what if... Because okay, money is just a way of transacting, you know, value. It's a store of, uh, it's a way right. to transfer value from one person to, to another. Kind of track the energy between energy uh, given back and forth between people in a way that is easy to handle. That way, we don't have to try to trade chickens for cows and 
you know, p- pineapples right. or whatever. So money's just kind of a go-between for, for folks, a medium of exchange, if you will. And it's uh, it's come out for, you know, it exists for a reason, to make humans more easily right. able to interact with one another. And it would be great if everybody just did what they wanted. But even if you're doing what you love, and a lot of people aren't in life, a lot of people do what they you know, feel like they have to do. But even if everyone was doing what they love, still their time is valuable and they can only allocate so much time to doing the things they love for the people that want them to do those things. And if, you know, if you're asking me to do something for you, Lot, and Mark, my co-host, is asking me to do something as well, and I don't have enough time to service both of you, I'm likely only going to be able to make one choice. You so need I a need way to... to allocate scarce resources. Right, right. and money okay. helps with that. Okay. So, okay, so here's my question to you then. Do you believe life is a gift? I, I, I like the idea that life is a gift. I don't know, believe, okay, I'll go, I'll go so far as believe. I will not claim it as a fact. Okay, so if life is the idea of a gift, because some, life is something that each individual takes as precious, mm-hmm. because you only have supposedly one life, so you need to cherish it. So how about the fact that you are alive will guarantee you a, a um, enough monetary to support yourself. Now, remember that in this in the future, how would that happen? That going, how would how would the fact that I'm forced, sucking air forced redistribution of wealth? Because, okay, so so we we base the, the the monetary system currently used to be based off of gold until the Federal Reserve removed it, and now it's based off of whatever they decide to say it's worth. Death, yeah. destruction, okay. and threats. So it, right. It, we we are all we are all of this planet. So we belong to this planet. This is our home. So everything part of this home belongs to each and every individual equally. So if there's a, a million and a half tons of metric or you know, metric tons of gold that exist on this planet, we would break it down to every individual. Every, Who's we? In, you know, every just. Would this be the central, uh, you know, well, administrator? Then gold's not valuable then, Lot, because we're not a government, not a government, not a government as in like uh, no, you just know, a like mob of people. Um, the so, Lot gold is only valuable because it's scarce, because people want it. Right. If you can no longer have it because somebody has decided to take it away and allocate it out um, to other folks, then it, it doesn't. It's no longer valuable for jewelry. It's only valuable as a medium of like for electronics and that kind of thing. Here's the question I have for you. You said that everybody gets to do the job they love. What's the worst job you've ever done? Um, none of it. I every experience I've had in my life, whether it's good or bad, I've enjoyed every moment. That of is it. beautiful. I did. I was a roofer, and I did wash dishes. And I can tell you, both of those jobs really stunk. I'd rather wash dishes over roof. I, I smashed my I'm hands sure. with the uh, with the hammer several occasions as a roofer. And I'm sure there are some sure. people that want to get on a roof in in Florida in summer and uh, put up shingles um, all day long. But I imagine that they want to take some time off too. Um, and oh, so I think you're going to have a difficult time with the jobs that need to be done. You know, the uh, plumbers probably don't want to play with poo unless they get paid ninety dollars an hour. Yeah. Well, see, here's an idea though, because we look at plumbing and we use plumbing as to go in and we, you know, it does whatever we, whatever chemicals we add to the water, so it can be redispersed back to us as individuals that drink it. Well, how about this? There's natural uh, plants out there that live in water. That what you do is you just put the wastewater in with them. They eventually deteriorate all of the diseased infection that's within. That's the great, water. but it doesn't you solve a clogged drink. pipe. I mean, somebody's got to so, get called right. to. Do the plants go in? Do the, does this does this natural uh, filtering system go in the house? Do I get to still use the bathroom in my home, or do I have to go out and find my natural pool that we've built into the yard someplace, or or do we still get yards? Or is this uh, is this all in big housing complex where we have the the natural pool built in every four units and it it spins around on um, you know inside each unit every it quarter hour? It sounds like a lot of central control. Why it's a lot of central control. Making, and I think what you're going to find a lot is that doesn't work. And I wish we had more time to talk to well, you about. You could call in tomorrow. But lot. yeah, anytime you want to talk about you know a vision for the future, I'm happy to continue the discussion. And I appreciate that you listen to Free Talk Live, and uh, hopefully we'll hear from you again. Thanks for the call tonight. Johnny Ray's Game of the Week. What is it? Because you've you've actually been without a Game of the Week, having been playing Hearthstone, I believe, your most recent Game of the Week, fairly steadily for the last couple weeks. Yeah, I have been, and, and that's what I've... Hearthstone is what I've been playing most of this week. I'm not so proud of that. Why? But... Well... What's wrong? You're, you're into a game? You've, you've, you, you can't put it down. What's wrong with that? That's a good question. I, mean, I just feel like your productivity. It's just be- Hearthstone is just a a a particular kind of 
specialized numbers management. And if you if you learn how to do that well, um, what have you learned? The, and there's some lore, some 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 lore attached to it. It's usually you don't learn anything from playing a video game. It's just a way to pass hours. Sometimes it's an entertaining thing to do. It's it can be an exercise for your brain. For some people, mm-hmm. for me, I never I never engage myself enough for it to be strenuous. You're too smart for uh, for hard. hard I stuff. Uh, I wish that was the reason. <laughs> no. Um, if by smart you mean lazy, then yes, I'm too smart. All right, so cut to the chase. What's the new game of the week? I've been playing a game called Shattered Planet on my Android device. What is it? It's from Execution Labs. It's a roguelike game. It's a science fiction setting. You play as a clone, and the clone ultimately dies, and then you are reborn, and you are able to use some of what you have collected, some of what you've collected in your travels to to boost your stats a little bit and buy a new piece of gear and then you go back you, you go back to it and you're exploring these these planets. You'll you'll get in this teleporter and go and it drops you down onto a a grid, a procedurally generated set of maps that are made on on grids. And it's got kind of a combination of real time and and turn based almost. You're you can move around freely, but each step you move, say you're moving five steps because mm-hmm. it's all gridded out. The enemies on there, they're going to move five steps in a random direction. I wish we had more time. Let's talk more about it next week. Shattered Planet, new, uh, the new game of the week from Johnny Ray. We'll get more details on it for you next week. This has been Free Talk Live. We'll see you tomorrow night. Guy. Hey guys, it's Mark Claire here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the Morning Roar! That's right, every Monday to Friday we'll have a brand new edition of the Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media, or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com. Advancing the ideas of liberty daily. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Peace News Now is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, April 29th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.35 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,289 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $448. Antiwar.com reports, Egypt's military junta continues to move forward with mass trials of those involved in public protest against last summer's coup and yesterday sentenced another 683 protesters to death for inciting violence. 
Among those sentenced was the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood, Mohamed Badi, whose political wing was the elected government of Egypt until being ousted last year by the military. The exact same judge was in charge of the first mass trials last month, which quickly concluded with the death sentence for all 529 detainees. The judge was handed the case of 683 protesters sentenced just a day after the first verdict. 715 more suspected Islamists are being held in a third mass trial related to the protest, and 204 more are facing the same inciting violence charge in a fourth mass trial. Though the United States has been somewhat critical of the mass execution orders, but has followed onto that criticism by freeing up massive amounts of military aid for the junta, suggesting that whatever theoretical problems they might have with executing protesters by the thousands, they don't amount to much on a policy front. You've heard of shinybadges.com, but you need to check out the new causes tab. Every item in that section includes a donation to a worthy liberty project like Shire Sharing. So go to shinybadges.com, click on the new causes tab, and get yourself a quality product that not only supports the cause you believe in, but starts a conversation with your neighbors. Plus, get a free gift when you pay with Bitcoin at shinybadges.com. RT reports, the Supreme Court will hear two cases to determine the legality of police searching cell phones without a warrant at the time of an arrest. The landmark cases pit the Obama administration against civil rights advocates who say police are conducting illegal search and seizures. In the digital age, about 90% of Americans own a cell phone and 58% have a smartphone. A legal battle is raging behind the scenes as to whether cell phones should be protected under the Fourth Amendment, which forbids unreasonable searches and seizures without a warrant, or should the technology become fair game for police following an arrest. The question will be considered in the cases of Riley v. California and United States v. Worry. In the past, courts have granted police the authority to search possessions of arrested individuals for two reasons, determining the individual is not carrying a weapon and to prevent the destruction of evidence like narcotics. The question of cell phones, they argue, does not fit into either category. Jeffrey Fisher, the lawyer for Riley, pointed to FBI statistics showing some 12 million Americans were arrested in 2012 alone, mostly over minor crimes like jaywalking, littering, or riding a bicycle the wrong direction on a residential street. Fisher believes it would be wrong that police would have the authority to search a person's cell phone without first getting a court order to provide a warrant, saying the digital contents of a smartphone are categorically incapable of threatening police officer safety, and once police have seized and secured a cell phone, there is no risk that the arrestee might destroy or alter its digital contents. Such files hold exponentially greater amounts and types of sensitive personal information than any physical item. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. NPR reports the United Church of Christ is joining the national debate on the future of gay marriage in a novel way. The church filed a lawsuit on Monday challenging North Carolina's ban on same-sex marriage, saying Amendment 1 violates the church's constitutional guarantee to freedom of religion. According to the church, this is likely the first challenge by a national Christian denomination of a state's gay marriage ban. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Well, it's the end of an era and the beginning of a new one. Today, Pennington's black part of town moved across the river to North Pennington. The Thompson family sold their home on the east side and moved to the old Kirkland Place at 17 Mansfield Place, establishing the all-new black neighborhood. North side residents are looking forward to the infusion of fun and funk that the new black part of town is sure to bring to their area. Mayor Mitzi Kranowitz presided over the dedication of the new black neighborhood, unveiling a sign designating it a land. 
landmark district. It's lovely, everyone. Pennington's diversity is its strength, whether it's Little Harlem or the so-called neighborhood where Paul and his partner Bryant have that cottage. Sheriff Stevens today announced that the heavy round-the-clock patrols that helped make the old Thompson house one of the safest neighborhoods in town will move with them. This has nothing to do with the black part of town moving here. We just want to make sure that everyone here has a comfortable place to live. This is the Onion News Network. Hello and welcome to an episode of Peace News Now Live this Tuesday, April 29th, 2014. Boy, it's good to be with you. If you're listening live at lrn.fm, you know there is a chat room built into that web page. But you don't get the video feed that's coming live via YouTube at peacenewsnow.com slash live. That's the best place to watch the show because you can watch, interact with other listeners, uh, chat with me, tweet. It's all kind of interactive over there. In case you're not yet familiar with this show, my name is Derek J, and I am a peace activist, a peace propagandist, and I produce a show twice a week called Peace News Now, in which we talk about acts of peaceful resistance that are making the news. And boy, do we have a packed episode today. It's a monumental episode, because for years, years, I've been talking about this Peacekeeper app. Maybe not years. <laughs> I said it twice, but it's maybe not true. Uh, at least one year I've been talking about this Peacekeeper app. That I know I can say with confidence. What is it? Well, apps are changing the landscape for freedom in America and indeed the whole world because apps, or short for applications, are things on your phone that you can use to, uh, like, little programs. And this little program is pretty handy. It can take the place of police officers and firefighters. Well, maybe not take the place of, but at least augment the responsibilities of. What am I talking about? Okay, so it's an app that you can put on your iPhone right now. It's downloadable at the Apple App Store. You cannot yet get it on an Android phone, but the release should be within a month. I'm already talking to the producers of this app, see if we can get them on Peace News Now to talk about it. Uh, maybe give us a little demo. I, if I had an iPhone, I would uh, be giving you a demo right now, but I'm I'm working off an Android right now, so hopefully that'll be coming. So, okay, what is it? You install it on your phone. You put have your friends install it on their phone and your family and nearby neighbors. And if you have an emergency, like a fire or a break in, some kind of robbery, the police raid or whatever, you can preset these different emergencies that uh, may happen. And you can instantly, with the push of a button, notify all the people on your contact list about what is going down. And not only that, not only does it notify a bunch of people at once of this important event that's happening and you need help, it tells them your location, and it immediately puts them into a chat room with all the other people who got the message. So, you know, for example, if there were a fire at my house, I would notify about five different neighbors. And let's say only three of them are home. I would get, you know, they would be able to correspond with each other and say, oh, I'm bringing buckets of water over to Derek's. And the other would say, oh, I'm a town away. I can't get there. And so this is a brilliant way for your friends and neighbors to have instant knowledge of what's going on with your emergency instead of relying on the old world systems that we did a hundred years ago. You call up one phone number, it's a central directory, 911, and then they listen to your immediate needs. Then they dispatch from a central location, uh, either EMTs or firefighters or police or all three, and then there's mayhem on the roads. They're not the closest people to you, most likely. And they're not the people who are going to do the most professional job. So we've seen in the news that the, we know that police are often called to 911 scenes and then they complicate things by making arrests or investigating for alleged crimes rather than seeking to make victims whole. And so this Peacekeeper app is a big, big deal. You can learn more about it at peacekeeper.org. But uh, I wanted to present a story that Liz Reitzig of nourishingliberty.com blog uh, blogged over at copblock.org it was uh, on the front page of copblock.org today i'm so excited this is great so let me just uh, read to you what liz reitzig has written published today at copblock.org by liz reitzig 
As difficult to acknowledge as it may be, the unfortunate truth is that we are in a place today where domestic police brutality has taken a dramatic toll on innocent lives. Another casualty of the inflated police aggression is the well-based distrust of the law enforcement system. Taking true stock of the evaluation, we see that deaths of Americans at the hands of American police officers has surpassed deaths of American soldiers in the Iraq war, in part because our police force is overly militarized. Our distrust is a measured response to a real problem. Those frequent and increasing incidents of government brutality, such as Kelly Thomas, Luis Rodriguez, Justina Peltier, just to name a few, prove that police presence, even in response to a crime, is often a great risk factor for assault and even death. These stories are endless. The facts, wrenching. People can justify all sorts of cruelties. For many, legality equates to morality. But as Dr. Martin Luther King so aptly points out in his letters, Never forget that everything Hitler did in Germany was legal. The working cultural assumption is that the justice system serves everyone equally. That theory has repeatedly proven false, with incarceration levels here higher than any other country and more blacks imprisoned now than during the time of the Jim Crow laws. To those who think that our police are Heroes who protect the safety and lives of your family look around you and ask the hard questions. At what point does the collateral damage become too great to bear? When it's your beloved pet or your beloved dying child? Or when you become the victim of a truly unaccountable system? In a country fraught with this increasing police brutality and long response times, emerging technologies promise a viable antidote to the rampant and escalating abuse of power. Cell phone apps have swept the world with solutions to everyday problems, providing connectivity to seemingly disparate populations. One new app offers a promise of peace, in contrast to the incessant violence associated with institutionalized law enforcement. The Peacekeeper app does this through a principled vision and clever approach. The app connects community members directly to each fostering community interdependence by empowering community members to protect each other. Imagine, instead of making a call to a law enforcement agency that's more likely overworked and far away and certainly trained to respond violently, instead, you press the button on your phone and your previously chosen neighbors will be alerted that you're in danger. They will be able to respond immediately, given their proximity to the situation. The app's strength is in its geographic proximity, and hence immediacy, of the responders. This provides a keen solution to in-home invasion or any property or personal crimes committed at various physical addresses associated with the app. In the near future, once the app is widely adopted, this will be a powerful deterrent to criminals knowing that the response team is geographically close to the point of potential crime. Victims of crime will not have to wonder if the responders will treat them as criminals. They'll choose their own responders based on who they trust. While there are still a few wrinkles to work out and wide adoption is needed in order for this to have maximum benefit, the vision and potential for this app are unparalleled. This truly creates the setting where law enforcement agencies are not needed and not desired. The app is available now to iPhone users in beta version, which is free, and by the end of May for Android users. Additional functions of the app are still in development, and the founders are committed to seeing improvements that allow for crime response and crime protection anywhere you go. At $30 per year, the app is the best way to peacefully protect yourself and your community. 
an added but not primary benefit. Well, we will continue with this article when Peace News Now returns. But what do you think about this app? Is this something you would use? Do you have a smartphone? Maybe this is something that would be useless to you. Maybe you could still benefit from others who have it without having a smartphone yourself. This is unlocking a whole new world of possibilities. And I am welcoming the end of a police state. More when Peace News Now returns. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at FFF at FFF.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. Did you know there's a way that could save you thousands on your credit card debt without going to a credit counseling organization or to a debt consolidation company? Did you know this same strategy could help you completely settle all of your debt fast? To unlock this vital information for free and to discover how much you could save, call now, 1-800-928-5394. At FDR, we're not going to explain this strategy on the radio. What we can tell you is we've already helped thousands of Americans resolve over $2 billion in credit card and other unsecured debt. Why not add your debt to that? Again, to unlock this vital information to settling your debt as fast as possible, call 1-800-928-5394. If you're struggling with debt, this may be the answer you've been looking for. Call now. The bigger your debt, the more you need this vital free information. To find out how much money you could save, call 1-800-928-5394. Find out for free at 1-800-928-5394. If you can't listen to the Liberty Radio Network's internet streams, free satellite channel, or radio affiliates, no worries. You can listen to LRN.FM from any phone, anywhere. Add this number to your phone. 213-493-0309. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Liberty Radio Network listen lines are locked into our stream 24 hours a day. Call 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. On LRN.FM, we talk a lot about alternative currencies. Did you know that now you can buy gold, silver, and other precious metals with bitcoins? LRN.FM has partnered with Amaji Metals to bring you great prices on beautiful .999 fine silver, as well as gold, platinum, and other metals. Check out their selection and pay with bitcoins or Federal Reserve notes at metal.lrn.fm. That's metal.lrn.fm. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.lrn.fm. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit the Liberty Radio Network when you shop at Amazon via shop.lrn.fm. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. 